But hello, hello everyone. Welcome to day nine of the slime experiments development. Did you catch the uh, new starting soon screen that I made? Quite good, if I did say so myself. I've been uh, into generating AI images for a while. And I was finally like, you know what? I'll just like spend a day seeing if I can make a new background. Since before I was using a starting soon screen of my character Psycho, who's not really incorporated into the channel. My character Kyoki, this one over, over here, her, she is the one in the emotes. So I was like, you know what? I'll just go ahead and make one of her. So it was a huge pain in the butt because getting a like AI generated image of that size is a huge pain in the ass because uh, you can either make a small one and then like make it larger, but then it like kind of blurs all the features and stuff and makes it not great. So what I had to do is um, just by pure luck, I found this one uh, that had like three of the same character, my character. And uh, I was like, okay, luckily they have like a white outline around them, which is perfect. So I can just kind of cut it out in, in paint. And then I just generated a new background that was just like a graffiti type background. And I just slapped her in front of it, merged them together, and there we go. Easy peasy. That was fun. Well, I say easy peasy, but it was like <clears throat> probably like a day worth of generating images to find that one image that worked and then slapping it in there. But still, fun times. Also, all the emotes that I have are also AI generated for the most part, I'm pretty sure. I don't think any of my other non AI ones are in there. Nope. All of Kiyoki. All lovely. Because why pay for something if I can just get it AI generated, right? And it's my character, so we win these. Anyway. Uh, shit. So in a pre previous day, I was like, you know, one of these days, I'm going to spend some time uh, off stream coming up with ideas for my. Uh, my game so we can just knock through levels and finish all these puzzles, right? And uh, I didn't do that. I, uh, I heard that Palia, a new game, was out in early access. So I downloaded that on, uh, I think it was Thursday. Started playing it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And well, that's pretty much where all my time went. Uh, so that was great. I don't know what it is, about like those like life sim games where like all you do is cut wood, mine resources, build things, um, you hunt, you catch bugs, that kind of stuff in Palia. What is so like entertaining about them, right? Like they just pull you in and sink your time, right? Meanwhile, in real life, I don't want to do any of that nonsense, but in a game, it's fun. I think it's because of the progression, right? If it was just like nothing but doing that with like normal tools and stuff, it would get boring, right? That was all there was to it. However, because they have upgraded tools like copper, iron, yada, 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 it gives you like a goal to go for, right? So you're not really playing the game for the experience, you're playing it to finish the goals, right? That's fun. That's fun. I, I really like having like a goal or like something to do in a game, right? That's why uh, I think stuff like Minecraft and whatnot. Uh, I basically go until I beat the Ender Dragon, and then I'm like, well, I have nothing to do now. Or unless there's like a, a modded boss that's like something in there. Or uh, I'm like, okay, we're going to do all the stuff in this mod, or I'm going to build this specific thing. And then once I run out of uh, the goal for that, I kind of just peter off. And I'm like, well, mm, I don't have anything else to do here. Yeah. Oh, in addition to that, I... Uh, I did go a little bit further with my game development for my uh, Doom-like game. And when I say I went a little bit further, basically I just added in um, some extra like ammo related stuff. So now there's a variety of different ammo types and you can get various ammo. And I gave some like pickups, made like a, a, a door thing that you can kind of go through, which will be replaced later on by a portal instead of doors because you're going to be in like forests or dungeons in this game. 
and whatnot. But uh, then I also made it so that when I eventually do have like sprites made for that game, they'll actually like move properly. I just do not have that functionality built in yet. But uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to figure that out. What I wanna do with the, uh, the sprites. So I'll have to find someone who can make high resolution, decent sprites, see how much they cost, and then see if I have the budget to get like a dozen done, right? Like a dozen like monster sprites done. So that's like front, side, back, left, right, movement kind of sprites, which is like a bunch, right? Because in my, in my previous game, I just went like, left and, and right sprites. So there was just like two dimensions to deal with there. But in this one, we're gonna have like them moving away, walking towards the player, that kind of stuff, which is going to take a lot more money. Yep. My plan is for this, for, for that game, the Doom Like, I do not want to use any like pre-bought assets. I want to get them made specifically for the game. That's going to be a bit of a challenge, especially when it comes to gun noises. I do not know what I'm going to do with that. I do have my own pistol. I know a friend who has some, like, AK and other guns. It's not exactly an AK. It's like a... It's one of the non-AK-47 ones. It's like a... It's an AK... I don't know if it's an S, an AKS, or it's an AK-74 or what it is, but it's one of those things. I shot it before, it was fun. Um, anyway, I could probably get away with like recording those. But then there's things like shotguns, which I don't know if he has one. I don't have one. Um, and then there's things like magical weapons that I'm going to add in as well, I think. Those will be another thing. I guess I can just find something to do with them. Like, just find something in the real world that, like, makes a noise that kind of sounds magical. Drug. Anyway, that's about it um, in terms of that stuff. Well, before we get into it, I just want to address a little something. Now, I was looking at the comments on one of my previous game dev videos. This guy was like, to be honest, this looks like shit. And he said, like, something about he's an actual game dev or he's actually a game dev, whatever. Um... If he is an actual game dev, he should know how unhelpful that comment is, right? Like, I know the game looks like shit. I mean, it's made in, like, paint, for God's sakes. <laughs> like, I'm not an artist, right? But him saying it looks like shit, it's obvious. It looks like shit. But, like, elaborate a little bit. What looks like shit, right? Is it the graphics? The design, the layout, does the concept seem shit? Like, just calling a game shit does nothing to help the developer learn from it, right? So if you really want to be just not an asshole who is just being mean on the internet for no reason, if you actually want to help someone grow as a developer, you can say, yeah, this is bad because, and then give a reason why, right? Constructive criticism, you know? I mean, sure, we can all go online and be like, this game is shit. But we'll write a little extra mile and say this game is shit because, right? Add that onto there, okay? Like, this game is shit because the developer's an asshole or something, right? Like, at least then there's a reasoning behind it, right? If you just say something shit, then, I don't know, you just sound petty and jealous, I guess. I don't know. But I mean, anyone can go on the internet and be like, I'm actually a game dev and this is shit, right? But uh, who knows? I just wanted to throw that out there. So if you uh, do want to complain about someone's game, at least give them a little something about why you don't like it, right? That's what I always try to do when I'm, you know, leaving like a review on Steam or something. If I don't like a game, I will be like, yeah, so the game is okay in this regard, but this stuff I really do not like. Like, um... I'm trying to think of a game that I've negatively reviewed. Let me see. If I open up my stuff and look at my profile, does it tell me which games I have reviewed? 
I have reviewed 43 games. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I, I made a review for a game that says the game was good at first, but now I'm just getting killed way too often. Despite upgrading my units and whatnot, they don't seem to be doing much damage, and I'm getting wiped out by enemies completely. The enemy numbers have also increased to the point where there are plenty of people to, you know, repopulate my army. But I gotta backtrack to do so, which isn't a big deal. But then I do so, to get the next group of enemies, my whole party gets wiped out again. So basically the issue there was, in the beginning, in the first, you know, couple of hours of the game, it was fairly easy, um, fairly challenging, and then, like, around where I, I quit the game, I just started getting, like, destroyed. And, like, it was, it was not great. Like, every encounter was a losing encounter. Um, it's just really annoying. Um, yeah. And then I have another game where uh, I, I said, I don't know if it's just me or not, but I feel like I can't not get hit a lot. Uh, to melee anything, you have to get in close, duh, but the enemies can kind of clip through your body and just hit you in the back, and even if they don't, they almost always hit you at least once before you manage to kill them. As for ranged encounters, they're easy enough to dodge at a distance, but to get close enough to kill them, you can't do much. They don't really telegraph their attacks long enough for you to know when it's coming. And there's a mage who apparently casts two or three attacks at once, dodging their attacks once, and by the time you get close, uh, you basically eat the next attack and lose like 25% of your health. So, yeah, that was not a fun experience for that game, I remember. Um, it was uh, like a... a it was not like melee doom like, I don't think, but it was like a melee game, like where you're a, a knight going through like an undead territory with like skeletons and mages and stuff like that, and they basically just wrecked your face because you, you you couldn't just not get hit. Like you had like a dodge and stuff, but like I think if I remember correctly, you were like locked into like an attack animation. So unless you wanted to like attack once roll away right away, attack once, roll away right away, which would just be a tedious and annoying gameplay system. Um, yeah, it was just impossible like, to avoid attacks at all, which you should, in a game like that, be able to avoid every single attack if you're good enough, right? But it just seemed like you couldn't. I don't know. Anyway, enough of me talking about that kind of stuff. Let's begin. Development. I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, <clears throat> here we have our, our orange room. And I actually added, or I didn't, I, did, I didn't add, but I did create two new blocks. So let's go ahead and add those in here. Boop. Now, I made a, a ice block. I'm going to call it a positor block. And they're both going to be like this. Oops, not multiple. That. Apply. All right. So the ice block, if I put it in here, you can see it's just kind of like a, an icy block. And then if I go with this thing, it's not that thing. This thing, this is a depositor. Think of it like a pitfall, except it's going to take multiple blocks to fill up or whatever. And then in this little white field, like a television screen, kind of, I'm going to display a number that's like, you need to deposit X amount of blocks and then every time you insert a block it's going to count down so uh, i'm not going to implement those right away and add new coding i want to build some more levels first and get rid of the stuff we already have uh, before we introduce new things but this one the idea is i'm going to add a text uh, a text mesh onto it that will control that and then every time you deposit a thing in there it's going to count down so it's kind of like a you need to navigate a bunch of blocks to a single point. That way, instead of using like a dozen pitfalls, I can use one of those in an area and save some space for other stuff, okay? I think that'll be neat. Anyway, let's take a gander at this and see where we were at. Level 14, that's there, that's there. Good, 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 all right. So let's check the previous map just to see what we had before. 
So we had a bunch of levers. That's right, we were introducing levers in this last game. And uh, that was fun. Okay. So going back to our assets, we introduced the lever. Or I guess our prefabs is what I should be looking at. We introduced the lever, the inverse block, we've introduced the movable, the pitfall, uh, the pressure plate, the gates, conveyor belts, the void block. Um, so all the things we have left to introduce are the portals, the destroyer blocks, and the attack tower. So, I think the attack tower would be fairly easy to introduce here. Okay, so let's start by making this the default parent, as we do, and let's uh, check the tile palette. What am I? Okay, make sure we select that one to be the active tile palette. Otherwise, we might start messing around. And... Okay, so for the exit. Let's go ahead and put it right here this time. Let's move our spawn point or our end level. Oh, actually, that's the wrong default parent. Sorry. There we go. All right, let's move this boy down to here. Let's grab the spawn point and let's move him. Let's start like down here this time. Let me make sure that he is actually in the right slot there. Okay, yeah, he spawned right up there. So let's move up one. There we go. Okay. So, we need to implement the attack tower. To do that, let's go ahead and put it in the world first of all. Move it over here. And this one we're going to want the direction to be to the left. Okay. Now let's just see how that looks. go up here. We can go past that pretty easily enough. Okay. So if you remember correctly on these, the hitbox is a little bit less than the pixel. That way the player has a, a good chance to get past it and whatnot. And blocks as well. We have the attack tower shooting left. Um, could I actually make this go smaller? Like that. I could, but then what would be the point, right? What about a 0 0.75? That just seems a little bit too big. If it's one, but I think it's fine. Screw it. We'll go with that. All right. We're going to spawn it there. And let's go ahead and get our tile palette. And we're going to go ahead and just build a wall here. Okay, and then what layer was this at? The foreground, right? So the player can go behind this. But we don't necessarily want them to go behind it. I mean, I don't know even why they would go behind it. Because the uh, target spawns here. So they might be able to like, sneak like right through here. Like, right here, yeah. And they can go behind it like this. That. Um, why can I walk over this? Excuse me? Tile palette? Why were you. What? Why did it select that? It was weird. Anyway, let's just add that again. Yes. Okay. So we have that, like that. So we want the player to go up. At like around, sneak through here, and then we'll add some more attack towers along the way. Um, and what we could do is give the player a block to start out with. That way, since they're seeing like a projectile being fired, they could try to move this block up to block it and to see what it does. 
Uh, so now if we hit play, the first thought of the player might be, oh, well, what if I just do this and it'll see, oh, that just destroyed whatever it hit. We should uh, not run into those, right? Also, uh, I'm going to just move the spawn point over here so you spawn actually in the middle. Otherwise, I think it would look a little wonky. We're going to do that. And then... Why don't we add... I add like another one right here and then just make this uh, first one layer one so it's above. And that way it has two attacks there. And then this one, we also want it to fire left. But we'll have it fire at a time of 2.5. That way it fires a little quicker. That way they're not at the same length here. So if we do this, we'll see it start firing. Although, that does make it very hard to pass by. What if I just do four? That way it's uh, a little bit longer of a time, right? So this one will fire first, and two seconds later that one will fire together. Then it'll fire one, and then together. That way it also shows that they can be set to different times, I suppose. Okay. We can do that. And then... I suppose that will block the player from going past these. They want to get over here. Then they can get over to this side. And then what we'll do... Why don't we put a tower here. We're going to have this one go up. We'll increase the speed to 4. And now, if we hit play, we should see that one go there, boop, boop. We can just kind of move this up here and then barely avoid getting shot by that thing. If I get hit, it does reset the level, right? Yeah. Okay. Boop. Okay. So I got it. So what we'll do here, let's make sure we're on the collider tile map. I'm gonna add another one of these little halls here. But what we'll do is we'll also go down this way. That'd be the end there. And then we will take out this piece here, I think, and I can go here and how, how do I manipulate that? Yes, but I don't have a... Oh, no. This one? No. What am I looking for right there? What, what, what piece do I need? Like that? No. Do I not have a piece for that? Oh, I guess it would just be this one, right? So with this, we have like a little notch for our player to hide in, right? Wait for it, and then we go. Hide in here. Go out and we're through. Hey. Well, that block is going to be useless, just used to basically show the player that they can, uh, you know, move out from there. And then, once the player gets to there, and you know, honestly, I could slide all this over by one to get more space, but do it. That's fine. Okay. So then we're in this area. I feel like we need to have, just to fill space, one thing here that goes to the right. And we're going to set this one to 
just so we have like projectiles moving at different rates, right? So it's not all like right when you hit play, everything fires at once, and then that's kind of the rhythm for it. We'll sort of stagger them. Okay. This one's going to go fire down this line here. Um, why don't we copy this one? And also put one down here. It's going to fire right. And then... And then... What do we want to do? I don't remember, but did we make it so that the gates get destroyed by these? I don't think I did. No, okay. So the gates do not get destroyed, which is good. Um, so what we could do is use the levers from the previous level and have you have to push like a block through a, a hole and onto a conveyor belt and then flip a lever to protect it against a attack tower down here. And that block will, will like open up a thing over here. So let's let's get this pitfall. Let's put it all the way down here. And then let's grab the conveyor belt. And let's just set this to right. Because the conveyor belt should not outrun the um, projectile. Because the projectile is traveling at 1.2. Uh, no, that no, was not, actually. The projectile is moving at 3 force, so it will definitely catch up to anything put on a conveyor belt. But that is fine. I was thinking about moving the uh, conveyor belt to go like down around there, so I have more space up here. But if I did that, then having a gate here would be pointless. So I think I want the gate to be about here, right? Also, this pitfalling down the spawn point in. Oop! There you go. Hold on. The uh, projectile doesn't destroy pitfalls or conveyor belts, right? I don't think it does, but let's just double check here. It is not, okay. Good. Good, 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 good. Okay. So. We want to take this gate, and first we'll set it back to active. I think we'll start the gate open. And then when you flick the lever, it turns off. Because that way, we can show the player that it does not pass through the gate. Which means we'll also add another gate, like right here. And then just continue the conveyor belt over to here. Oops. Okay. Like that, and then we'll want to grab our tile palette, which are on the tile collider. Grab this little block and put it here, and we'll put one here. Like that. Okay. Oops. Go ahead and just extend this all the way over to here. This. Oops. I guess I can just do this as well. There we go. Okay. Um, maybe I 
Maybe I move the spawn down to here. That way what I can do is I can get a attack tower here. And then have this one go to the right as well. And if I move the exit to right here, the player will have to kind of go through this area in order to get to it. Let's move the end point over to there. Okay. And then what we'll do, we can use some movable blocks. To provide the player with some cover to get in there. And then with this attack tower, we can really crank the force up like this. Let's see how that looks. I want to make sure that the player can actually move and get from cover to cover here, so. I don't know if they'll be able to do it. Yeah, not like that. Uh, let's change the force to four. Still don't think that's fast or slow enough. Three. I do like on this one right now, uh, how Every time that the line that's moving around the crystal ball thing is to the right side, it is like firing one. It's really nice. Yeah, I think we need time to attack to be higher. I think regardless of how fast they're moving, that's the issue. So we do like that. And then the player can go boop, 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 boop. And it'll end, right? That should be good. Okay, so we want two and five for that. Anything faster of a fire rate, and it'll be uh, pretty hard to do anything there. Okay. So we have that. So we need the lever now. So let's put here and we'll put it next to, there we go. We need to have multiple objects and always start object visible. Actually, no, not that one. We need this one, which we're gonna have true, true. Object to change. We want to take the, uh, the gates here. Boop. And that was the, Horizontal, so this one's the vertical. Now as we come up here and switch these on and off, it'll open up, allowing the thing to go down through there. Then we need to get this movable block and push it into there. Easy peasy. I can also add a block void here so that the player knows they cannot get a block down that way. I will be moving this movable block, just FYI. Um, it's just there for, for now. Okay. So, I think we should move this movable block over here. And then in this place, make like a, a wall, like a tunnel that they have to get the block through. That wouldn't really... Hmm. We need to be able to get the block here at least, right? So... This is kind of what sucks about having too tall uh, two block tall attack towers here. If I wanted to put it down one more, I'd have to put it over that, wouldn't I? Okay, well, could always move that away to somewhere else. You know what? Let's remove this movable block. Let's take this attack tower, 
which is three, right? Yeah. Let's move it down to here. Let's then go to our tile map. And let's do that. And that, that, then that, and that, and that, and boop, boop, there we go. Okay, let's do that. Why not? And I could add another hole here to make this like, oops. Uh, excuse me. Then I'll just grab the uh, there and do that. This one and put it here. Unfortunately, I don't, once again, have a uh, thing that adds two little nose to the inside there, so that's going to be how it is. That way it's not just a weird looking thing. That way it has like two notches in there for the player. Why not? Screw it. Okay, so now we have a, a pathway that the player can go down. And I think what we'll want to do is make it so that with this attack tower, the player has to push the block and then go up and around and push it down uh, in order to hide it, right? Which means we're going to need four width here. So let's actually take this guy and these guys at least. And then we want to go at least up one higher like this. Right? I want to add a pressure plate probably here and we're going to have this one spawn blocks is one object show update okay this will spawn a block so we need to move the block to spawn up here Now, now that we have a block spawned, what would prevent the player from just pushing it directly through here and not going up to this row? Well, first of all, there were no obstacles to force them to do so. That would do it. Once again, I've created one of those things. And then I think we want to do this like every two slots. Hmm. I'll move the lever, I think. So lever, lever, lever. Never. Let's move you over to here. But you know what, let's move you here? No, here? I don't know. Well, we'll leave it there for now. All right. Which means I can grab this block. Put it here. That there. This one here. That one there. There, here we go. So, the idea now is though the player cannot Put the block on the top row and get it away from it, right? They're gonna have to go through this, which means they're gonna need to push the block from here up over and then have to go up here and push it down and then they have to go around and then once they're ready push it back up, go around, push it over, boop, 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 right? Which getting the timing for this thing down is gonna be a pain to determine how quickly we're able to move 
So, also, I uh, need to get rid of that guy, I think. Well, do I need to? What if I just add like that? Make it so uh, it doesn't matter, right? That. Because those ones were already like that, right? If I do that, we're all Gucci. Right? Okay, so that's going to be the level, I think. A little lackluster in terms of what's around, right? But still there. And you know you can't get that block over to there, so that's good. Okay, so let us hit play and time this block correctly. And I just make sure everything else functions as I uh, imagine it. Move that up. This whole, oh, got stuck. Just barely enough time right there. Okay. So you're going to see the gate. You're going to see the lever. You're going to flip the lever, find out that it opens that up, and that the projectile goes down there. So you're going to notice that. You're like, okay, well, obviously, I've got to get something down to the hole. So you go over here, trigger the pressure plate, determine, oh, hey, looks like that block's going to die. Okay. So yeah, we definitely need a, a longer attack time, so let's set it at six. Let's see how that works. Oops, I have to actually click in here now. All right, so we'll wait for it to pass. Up, over, go! Okay, woo! Wait for another one. Up, over, and down. Ho oh. ho! I think I can get another one right here. Oh, we made it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay, so we want it to be six. Oh. Darn. But then there's that, isn't there? We'll have them scratching their noodle caboodle crap. I messed up. Oh, just barely. I think I'm gonna screw this one up too, though. I am. Darn. This is all about the timing, which means it's gonna waste the player's time a little bit. Luckily, these blocks are small enough where you can die. <laughs> No. Ah! Fuck me. <laughs> okay. Yep. I don't know why I was like, I can make it past both of these. No. Fuck. I can at least get to the second one without having to worry. Oh, man. And every time you get struck back, it resets to of the thing. Oh, fuck! You know what? It's a little bit difficult. 6.5 seconds. How about that? Uh, player. I'm just gonna... What was... Oh, crap. I triggered the... They triggered it. The ending. This is Tower 3 or Ash. Okay. We were at 6.5 before. That's what I get for trying to cheat my way through. Okay, so let's actually go around everything. There we go. Okay. Now we're at 6.5. We should have a little more leeway with stuff. There we go, yeah, 6.5 seems like a good number. Oh no, oh no, oh god! Oh! <gasps> almost there. Okay, so we need to push this down now and hit this. Okay, well.
You know the freaking conveyor belt. There we go. Okay. That is very tight timing there. But I think I'll leave it like that. So the player potentially has to worry about that as well. Okay. And here we go. Whoop. Yep, the darts will kill the player. Actually, question. Um, yeah, the player can just do this, can't they? <laughs> but yeah, Ryle, the, the darts will kill the player. So if I were to go up and let it hit me, boop, resets the whole level. So they got to be careful not to get hit as well. Okay, well, I learned something good right here, and that is that this, uh, these immovable blocks, need to go up by, like, one. If only, right? Um, they need to go up a little bit. Like, that, I think, is fine. I just need to check to see if the player has clearance through there now. here. So now I can still get through here, but I can't just wait here and reset. Okay. That's what we'll do. So then this tower once again, 6.5 is what I did with that. Perfect. I could have lowered the dark spawner, but if I did, it wouldn't be coming from the direct center of the, uh, the orb thing. Right. Whereas right now, it is. So... It's, it's, it's perfectly where it needs to be. Maybe it's a, a pixel or two high, but it is coming from basically the, if we pause it right when it launches one, there we go. Yeah, right there is where it's coming from. Yeah, it's not centered, but I think even if it was centered before, we would still be able to hide there. So open this guy up and then Actually, it's the, the darts that are... Where, where, where's the... Uh... Open this thing up. It's in here, isn't it? Instantiate, Y position, 7.5. 7.5. So, let's go 7.3. And then it can get a little centered, I think. We'll see how that works. Yeah, cause it, even if we were to center it, it wouldn't matter because if we look at the uh, prefab here, the whole dart is not a hitbox. It's just like the center area. That way it gives the player a little bit of lead space. But now if we hit play, we should see it basically coming out of the center of this thing. Yeah, it's mostly centered now. Still not centered, okay. Where are the attack blobs? There it is. This one. Right there would basically be. There it is, right? Let's make this a child of tower four. So this to zero. Zero. Boy, that's tower four. Um, this is tower five, sorry. So zero, zero, and then 0 0.70. Is 70 basically the middle? Is it, is it 0 0.69? It is 0 0.69. That is the center. It goes right there. Or is it, no, is it six, eight? I think it's 6.8, actually. We're looking at it being the exact center. Darn! One off of 69. Six, 
Unfortunate, but okay. So that should center all those, but it's not like it again mattered too much because I'm pretty sure it didn't matter for those few pixels. I mean, we can try it and just see because the the slime hip the slime hitbox is a little wonky. We could check. Hopefully for the past, go up here. Yep, still goes over our head. So I would have to lower it a, a little more. At least two. Yeah. Like if, they, if they're not hugging that block, they wouldn't be able to avoid that. But uh Yeah, we'll just unfortunately we'll just raise them up a little bit. I think that's all we have to raise them, in fact. Still want to give them like a, a big enough space to where they don't feel like they are stifled, right? But, but now, yep, okay. That's perfect. Cool, so now this level's done, let's go ahead and add in all of our things here. So we have our, our pitfall we need to add. We have our lever we need to add. We have our, let's hit that button. We have our gates that we need to add into here. We don't have any cages. We don't have any portals. We do not have any. Uh, we do have a couple attack towers, I guess. Uh, let's add those. Four. Uh, one. One, two. Right, this one. And this one. Oop. What does the attack tower reset do? Why do I have two level scripts open? Oh, lever and level. God. Why do ours look like V's? Okay. Um, so the reset for the attack towers, it just... Oh, right, it just sets them active. Because the only thing it resets is if you use a destroyer block on it. Which, uh... Yeah. Okay, that'd be the only thing that would affect that. So um, that's cool. So we want the movable block item respawn, and then we just need to create a empty called block spawn. And we just need to move that over onto this block. And we just add that into the spawn points. And then we have one pressure plate to add actually. So let's add that. Pressure flight, there we go. All right. And that's everything we need to set up. So, perfect. Let's go ahead and save this level. And call it good there. Okay. So level prefabs. Level 2 4. Go. Now, we will go ahead and delete that. Open level 2 3. Drag that one over there so it's in there to spawn the next level. Go. All right, next, level 2-5. All right, attack towers have been introduced. So next, we can introduce portals, I do believe. And that'll be fun. So let's just make a bunch of little rooms that uh, are closed off and stuff. Ugh. This one should be pretty interesting. Okay. So, let's grab, first of all, we will set our exit to be down here. Why not? Uh, spawn point. You're going to be up here. End point, you're going to be down here. All right. Now, well, let's, just, let's just make some rooms. So... Hmm. 
Let's go with this. One room. And we can go with Actually, I don't even need to do that. I'll be doing that. And then we can go here. And then we can make that a room and that a room. And then we can do just right up the middle of this guy like that. And then right across here like that. Make them nice little rooms. Perfect. Okay. Ooh, cool. So if I hit play, where's the player spawn exactly? Right there. Okay, perfect. So actually gonna I think move this over one. There we go. Let's add in our portals. Yeah. Okay. So we have the portals here. You know what? Let me let me go into this real quick. Mm. There. They were uh, too high previously from the uh, the center point here. Okay, so. Why are these not set? Hold on. ATP location. BTP location. There we go. Okay. So the player spawns in here. So let's grab portal A and we'll put it here. Let's grab portal B We'll put it over here. Okay, so portal B's location, we're going to go over here, and portal A's location, we're going to go down to here. Be easy. So let's just hit play, make sure it tracks. So we go over into the portal, come out over here, go into here, come out of there. We do appear to be going lower than. Where I set it. We do need to raise it up one, I think. Mm. Well, that's just gonna be the player. Do I have the portal script open? I don't think I do. Hold on. Let's see. Because I think if it's a normal block, it'll be in the right spot. But if it's a player, because of the player's stupid hitbox, it's uh, gonna gonna be lower. So let's do if collision dot game object dot tag equals player. So if it is the player, otherwise we want to do the same thing here. We want to do basically the same thing here. However, we want to take... There we go. All right. So that's our end game right there. We do need to take the uh, vector three new POS equals, and we're gonna have to copy this, paste that there, do new POS right there. We need to take that, and we need to do new POS dot y equals new POS dot y. Minus, or I can just do minus equal over here. Minus equals, no, it'd be plus equals, my bad. 
plus equals, let's see, where would this be at? So if he was here, that'd be two. If he was getting set to like here, so just one, I think. So plus equals one. Like that. That way it'll uh, throw him, throw the player up one. And we just do that. So that's all we need to do. I'm going to grab this once again and throw that here. And we just need to do this portal B TP location. And we change this to new POS once again. Okay. So now, if we go through this as the player, it should correctly put us in the location that we want to be in. Boom, 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 boom. Heck yeah. All right, and now, if I, if I were to add a block, just to make sure that it works for blocks as I think it should, we'll spawn a block and I'll just push it into one of them. There we go. I'm in two. Yay. Woo. Okay. Perfect. Get rid of that block now. <sighs> okay. Let's rename this portal. A to C. I'm going to name these rooms room A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. That way, I'll be able to keep track of which portal goes where. Okay, let's copy this. We're going to drop it down. Why did that not copy? What did I copy paste? Ugh, okay, we're going to drop this down. We're going to take portal B, and we're going to move it over to this one. And then we need to take portal B's location, move it over to here. Take portal A's location, move it over to here. And rename this one to be A to D. Okay? It's going to be like a, a portal puzzle, right, where you like got to figure out which one goes where. All right. We'll copy this again, and we're going to call this A to C, not C, A to B, A to B. Okay. Then we just have to move these around, so portal A goes here, portal A, TP location is going to go up to here. Portal B goes here. Portal B TP location down here. Okay. So now these three portals should work if I minimize all of them. I play and try to go through them. It should take me to those three different rooms. So here's portal A, portal B, and portal C. That was I go kind of like in between. It just kind of picks whichever one I'm closest to, huh? Okay. Perfect. <laughs> nice. All right. Very good. So now that we've done that. We should probably do something that will then get us to another room. And we probably want to do something that will, like, cause some problems, right? So I think what we can do here is if we go back to our tile map, and if I do like this, and like that. What I can then do 
is add gates in all of these locations. here that way the player can see oh there are three gates there that we have to get through in order to do that which means there's going to be three levers let's put one here let's put one here and let's put one here and then we just gotta do uh Always start object visible. And we're going to grab that guy there. Always start object visible. And we we'll grab this guy here. And always start object visible. And we we'll grab that guy there. So, the goal of the player is to figure out how to get to these rooms, to flip the lever, and then how to get to a portal that's going to be down here. So, that's kind of the plan. So we'll need to go down, go to all the different levers, hit all the levers, open up the gates, and get out. Right? Okay. So I guess let's create the last room portal. Because that'll be what we want to do here. So let's move A. Let's put it down here. B, let's move down here. So B's portal location will output over here. A's portal location will output up here. And we need to call this one uh, A, B, A, B, C, D, E, F, F, 2, H, wait, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, yeah. I don't know why for some reason I was thinking that one was F. I'm losing my mind. All right, so we should have these uh, set up here. So A, A, B to B, and we're good. Okay. You know, in all honesty, I should flip these two around to where A's location is near B at all times rather than having it like this. I'll do that after this level, I think. Or I could just make a change now and just do this. No, if I undo that, it would be me. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine! Okay. Because if I rename them now, or I switch them around, it's uh, going to change where they're at, I believe. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. So, obviously, I don't just want, like, a portal here to here, and then a portal here to here, and a portal here to here. I want you to have to, like, go to, like, different rooms, find different things, you know? So, let's say... That... First of all, I'm just gonna, uh, I think I'll just drag a new set of portals in. So I don't have to worry about them being in weird positions. Okay, so. Let's take portal A. I'm gonna place it up here. I'm gonna take portal B, place it over here. Portal A's location is gonna output over here. Portal B's location is going to output over to here. Okay. And this one is going to be A, B, C, D, E. E to B. Or B to E, sorry. B to E. Okay. Okay, and then Do it. 
I'll just do this. Okay. Make a bunch of copies first. So, next up, let's take a portal from here and let's have it go down to here. There we go. This is going to be B to D. And then let's have the next one, portal A. Let's have you go over here. And portal B will go over to here. And portal B's location. Where was A? Right there. Okay. No, that's wrong. There. And there. Okay. Excellent. Now. We want to name this one uh, C to A. Perfect. Let's make this one. Put that one here. We'll put B here. These locations can output here. A's location is going to output here. We're going to name this one A, B, C, D, E to A. Alrighty. And then, grab this portal. A, we're going to move down to here. Let me, let me fix that real quick. Mm. Boosh. There we go. Okay. That's better. Now then. So that one goes down to there. And then let's move B. And I'll put it over here. Excellent. This is going to be... Uh, D to C. Okay. We are starting to run out of room in these rooms, which means I need to add the rest of these things over here before we fill up. So, portal A, we will have B down here. Portal B, have you be down here, or B's location is going to be there, or A's location is going to be there, and this one's going to be D to G. Okay. Excellent. Those go there. And now we need one for this room. Let's have portal A. Which one goes to E? B goes to E. Okay. So let's move this portal down to this room then. This one will go to this room. A's there, A's location is there, Portal B is there, Portal B's location is there, yeah, that's not good. Portal B's location would be there, there we go, okay, 
This one is going to be C to F, right? C to F. Okay. So now I just make a, a bunch of nonsense portals. I don't mean anything. I really should have started with the ones that worked properly and then been like, okay, now I'm just gonna throw random stuff in here. But uh, essentially I wanna fill up that slot, that slot, that slot, those two slots, and I add more slots here. So. You know, which portal, which, which, which portal is this one? It's E to A. There shouldn't be another portal here. There just shouldn't be. So why don't we move this one and call it A to A. Just have it kind of spit you out again, right? Uh, but let's move B portal up to here. A's teleport location got thrown way off, so let's move it back over here. And portal B's location also got thrown off. There, okay. Because I, I want to have just like one entrance to each room, which means I also want to remove that one. No, I think I want to leave that one there, since that one just goes there to there. Yeah. This is why you should have done the ones that work first, right? Also, fun fact, I've already forgotten which ones go where, other than these ones linked together, um, which is just great. So I don't. If you ask me which portal goes to which one, I have no clue. All right, so let's add this portal going from here. Do I have a another A to D? No. Okay, so let's add this one as the final A. D to A. Okay. Looks like we have basically two more slots. Those are going to have to go here. Um, so let's just bang. Portal A goes here. Portal A goes here. Portal B goes here, and portal B goes here. This portal A is the bottom one, move that one there. This portal B is that one, this one will go here. That one completed. Portal A is that one, so we'll move portal B's location to here. Portal A's location is that. The portal B is the middle one right there, so we'll move this one down to here. This should mean these are set up. Okay, so it's going to go from B down to C. And then this one goes from B down to D. Okay. Excellent. Um, and then I guess I just need one more, one more, one more. And this one will have start down here and move up to here. 
there. Right up there, right? Yep, okay. And this one is uh, C to B. Excellent. Okay. So, with that, all these portals basically interconnect multiple times to, like, each other. And then only one of the portals on the right will lead to these portals here. And then those portals link. Once again, I want to iterate that I have no freaking idea which portal on the right of the main four rooms goes to these portals. I've completely forgotten. Um, that is great. Uh, okay, so what I, what I might do here is I might create some more portals on this side to kind of give them an illusion that they go somewhere else, but they just loop back to the same room. I don't want to have them go anywhere else. Oh. I think that would be the best plan. Let's go ahead and copy this. A couple of times. So let's go A, B, C, D. It's going to be a E loop. E loop two. Let's call them F loop. This one F loop two. We're going to be portal uh, G loop and G loop two. Excellent. Okay. Open these bad boys up. Okay, so portal A, we're gonna start over here. Portal B, and go over to here. Okay, that one's done. Put them in random areas to like make the player be like, what the heck is going on here? Also make this one kind of be like off on its own little thing. So it's like, why uh why is that one there? Is that like a special portal? Is that so the developer knows which one is there? Which one leads to the next place? Ha ha ha. Doesn't do anything, just loops. And then also for portal F, I could take portal A and move it to this side. Ooh. Portal B, I could take and move it over here. Because that way, again, it seems like maybe those two are linked. Maybe those are linked or, or something like that. Because, ooh, in this room, everything's left and right oriented. But in these rooms, everything's sort of all over the place. Ooh, ooh which portal do you go through, you know? Ah, uh, shit. Okay. Let's continue on. Go. And now Portal G, or I guess Room G. This is really a uh, overwhelm the player's senses kind of level. Which I am down with. Okay. So not only does the player have to hit these levers, which, I mean, if you think about it, it's, it's, I was gonna say, they'll have to remember which levers they've hit. Woo! But, uh, I guess it doesn't matter. 
since. Oh my god. Oh my god. I could be really, really dirty and figure out some way to add another gate in here and have two levers control that one gate. So they have to like go through and flip the levers multiple times until they get all of them to open because one of them will turn on, one of them will turn off. Could I do that? If like I had one gate that was off and that lever controlled it, that would turn that one on and that one off. And they'd have to hit the next lever, which would then just turn both of those off, so I guess it wouldn't really matter. Because it really wouldn't do anything. Because as long as all of them were on, it would uh work. Unless they all started on, in which case your first lever turns those off, but the second lever turns those two, that one on, that one off, then you go back to the first lever, that would turn that one on, or that one off, and then that one on again. And those two would be off now. I don't think you can do that. I think there wouldn't be a, a unless I link them all to a lever, that wouldn't do anything. Yeah, I think we'll just leave it how it is. Screw it. I don't even know how to get through this level. I think this is our completed level. Okay. Let's play test. Okay. Ooh, I forgot to add dialogue for the last level. That's fine, we can do that next. Um, I guess I'm gonna go through this one. That takes me here, over here. What if I just keep going straight? I hit that wall, but I did get to one of these rooms. And then I know that these levels are there. So what if I drew that the same thing here? Okay, so I just loop around if I do that. Okay. What if I go up to this one? Oh, okay. And I know I just go back to the same one here, and then we just go boop, 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 boop. That, uh, that, that one? That one? Back, back to here. Um, back to here. Let's try the third one here. Nope. Second one? No. The last one. Nope. First. Oops. 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 Uh, first one? No, I already did that one. Which one was the <clears throat> bottom left door? Uh, let's go through this one. No. Top one. No. I need to get to the other room here. Okay, so let's try the middle one here. No. The bottom one here. There we go. Alright, doors are open. I need to go... How do I get back to the upper right room now? <laughs> Shit. Okay. Uh, oh, this one down here is that. Um, I need to get to the upper left, or upper right room, I think. Okay, now it's this one? No. Top one, in it? No. Not that one. It is the bottom one? No. No, so it's the bottom right room? Bottom left room, I mean? Uh, room is it? Damn it. There we go. And through here and over here to the wind. So it took me about two minutes to figure out these portal puzzles, even though I was the one who created it. And I forgot on the left side which portal went where. Fun times. Okay. So I think that's a fun little, aha, here's how this level works. Tee hee kind of thing. Okay. So we don't have any blocks, but we do have levers that we want to add into this in order to start things so levers and then we can add the gates in here too and then portals which i don't think we need to add the portals into the reset script 
because if we look, portals just get set back to active, which means they get destroyed. So we don't care about those. Yeah. We do not care about the portals because the portals in this particular map cannot be destroyed. So that's that. Let's add this to our level. Let's open up level six. Make this uh, items as the default parent. Now, before we go any further, we need to, first of all, drag that one here. But we also need to make text for level four, or level 14, I should say. So. What should we do this? <clears throat> How about feast your eyes on one of my inventions? I call them attack towers. They use uh, magic crystals to launch attacks at regular intervals. If you get hit, it won't kill you, but it will reset your progress as well as destroy any block they hit there. So we'll just kind of tell the player what that does. Easy peasy. Save on to level two five. So last time we mentioned magic, right? So also in this level, let's talk about magic. So speaking of you in in Inventions. A uh, mage colleague. Colleague? How do you spell colleague again? Is it like that? No, it has a U in it. A mage colleague of mine came up with a Spell. It allows for creation of portals for short range teleportation. In specifically marked locations. He asked me to test the spell out to see if it is safe on living organisms. So, give these portals a try. Why don't you? So essentially, <clears throat> we're not only making the, the, the lore about the scientist who's conducting these experiments, but we also mentioned that he has a colleague who came up with this portal magic that uh, he wants tested on living organisms. And so, in addition to testing the slime's intelligence, he is testing the portals to make sure that they're safe for living organisms. So, that's how that goes. All right, save. That'll be the, uh, the text there. So it also kind of tells the player these are portals they can go through. I hope that by making them blue and orange, it is also a, a hint that they're portals, since the game called Portal uses blue and orange portals. Um, but yeah. Neat. Okay. That's two levels, bam, down, just like that. <clears throat> Level 2-6, prefabs. The only thing we have not used right now is the red slime and the destroyer blocks. 
So I think we'll make this level about destroyer blocks because I want to use the red slimes a little later. Um, and I am going to get a drink of water or a glass of water, whatever. And I'll be right back in just a moment. Okay, so the premise for this level is quite uh, obvious. We just want to show that the destroyer blocks destroy, well, everything, essentially. I mean, they don't destroy everything because uh, they don't destroy conveyor belts. Uh, let me open up the destroyer block script just so we have a uh, recollection of what all can be destroyed. So. I don't think we're going to worry about the cage right now for destroying stuff. And the enemy doesn't matter right now. So really, we just need movable block. Let me make a note. Not that. Uh, I can just open up my current thing. One moment. OK. I already had slime stuff to do open, but I remember I added a bunch of stuff to it. But I didn't want to close this one and then have this one not just <laughs> Okay. Also, as you can see, I added more stuff to the slime stuff to do, which um, is essentially implement the ice mechanic and implement the depositor uh, item that we have here. Uh, I just added basic comments to like what it's going to be. Anyway, so I'm just going to note down all of the things that we can destroy here. Um, attack tower, lever, movable block, inverse block, destroyer block, portal, and gate. Everything else we don't really care too much about. So, thanks. Basically, the, the, the thing with these is if it's a non-flat object, the block will destroy it. Okay. I'm trying to get rid of some of these extra things here. We don't need all of these. Do I have a destroyer block spawn? I do not have a destroyer block spawner. I'm going to make one. Okay. Let's go... Case. Break. Destroyer block. And we want to do... I guess, uh, I guess we don't really have to find active blocks because the destroyer block will just destroy other destroyer blocks that it touches when it spawns. For this, we don't need to check. Um, we just basically want to instantiate. We don't care about anything else. There we go. This one's hella easy. It doesn't even matter, because if something is there, the destroyer block will just destroy whatever is in that particular spot. Right. Okay. Uh, 
Great, the new block to be spawned. Doesn't matter what's there. Destroyer block will destroy it. Smiley face. Okay. And pressure plate can go bye bye now. Destroyer block. I won't have it destroy the new ice blocks or the new um, depositor. It also doesn't destroy pitfalls, which is nice. Speaking of pitfalls, does the pitfall take destroyer blocks as an option? I don't think it does. But let me check. Ah, yes, if it's a, uh... Right, I forgot some stuff just has a check to see if a destroyer block collides with it, so... So pitfalls will destroy, or will be destroyed by destroyer blocks. Okay. Hey, pressure plates! You, uh... You don't have a destroyer block thing. Do you? You do. Okay. Pressure plates are also destroyed by that, so pressure plates. But they can also spawn destroyer blocks. Fact, right? Okay. Um, inverse block, you don't matter. Timer script, you don't matter. Okay. What other stuff in the prefab do I have that's not in this list right now? So the block void, it's just going to destroy everything. It doesn't care. The destroyer block cannot destroy void blocks. Um, conveyor belts. Surely you don't get destroyed by destroyer blocks, right? Okay, destroyer blocks also move on conveyor belts. Good. Good, 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 good. Um, and then inverse block, move block, pitfall, portals. Cool. Okay. So, how are we going to lay this out? Well, let's go ahead and just randomly throw down a exit somewhere. Um, how about here? This time around. Why not? Okay. So now we have the mighty destroyer block, which can destroy literally... I was going to say literally anything, but it can't. It can't destroy literally anything. It can destroy literally most things. So this is going to be a fun one. So first of all, I suppose what we should do is let's make a little room at the top for the player. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll just do this and that and this. And I think the destroyer block can destroy immovable blocks, if I remember correctly. Let's add a thing here. Let's move the destroyer block a little bit to the... put a little bit there. Okay. And the spawn point. I'm gonna put you up here. So if we hit play, it should... It goes like this. And then we can just go boosh, which actually does not do anything to the immovable blocks. <clears throat> Shame. Uh, we need to add logic for that, so... Shoot. Oh man, that sucks. That means we're gonna have to, like... start creating stuff for those when the things are destroyer or blockable. So, let's see. So we have immovable block. Go ahead and add that logic in here. Case. Break. Immovable block. We want to destroy. Collision game object. Just like that. Or, 
No, 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 no. We're just gonna set it inactive. That'd be so much simpler. Yeah, we're just gonna set it inactive because if you think about it, when we have to, in the future, replace these immovable blocks, we're gonna have a bad time. So let's not worry about that. Did I not? I didn't label the portals, I don't think. Or did I label the portals, just not the portal mark? Yeah, okay, I labeled the portals themselves, not the actual portal. I'm just going through to make sure everything is tagged properly because that's important to this uh, particular level. Cage is not marked cage. There we go. Now it is. Void block and attack tower. Okay, perfect. Everything else is tagged perfectly. That's good, so. Yeah, so basically, we want to disable it so that in our thing here, our uh, level reset, I can just add a thing for immobile blocks. So in level reset, we want to do if, and then before we do that, we want to do a list of game objects, immovable blocks. So if immovable blocks is greater than zero, sorry, move blocks dot count, my bad. We want to basically do this thing. Um, yeah, sure, we'll just do this. <clears throat> There we go. All right, so we just want to set them all back to true. If any of them get deleted, because they're not going to be movable, they're just going to be hideable, essentially. So that'll be what we're going to do with them. Um, yes. Cool. So. If we didn't do this, where we just set them inactive and then set them to be um, false here. And we just straight up destroyed them. We would have to do what we do with the movable blocks, which is add them into our items to respawn, first of all. And it also makes spawn points for all of them, which if we do that with the immovable blocks, there could potentially be just so many of them. And that's not cool. So I'm not going to do it. All right, so now if I hit play and we spawn in, our player will be like, huh, we are in this uh, room with a new block. That's odd. There's an immovable block there. I guess we have to push this block into that. And boom, the immovable block gets destroyed. Oh, ho. So the players now learned that they can destroy the immovable blocks with those blocks. Well, that's not all. We need to add some more stuff here next. So let's create a another little area. Maybe we'll just kind of singe this off here. And let's see. How do I want to do this? Okay. Let's just do this. Aha, file map foreground, I see you. I'm just gonna switch it to the collider. I'm not gonna delete that stuff. I bother. I am gonna delete it actually. There we go. Okay. I lied. Let's switch it back to that. Okay. So now, 
once we select these guys. What I want to do here is, first of all, we're going to place down a void block here, right? This is going to show that the player cannot, double check here, cannot destroy void blocks with the destroyer block, okay? Because the void is ethereal. I think that's the right word. It's not a physical object. It doesn't collide, right? So <clears throat> they're going to learn that they can't push it out here. But we also want to grab a pressure plate. And we're going to set the spawn point to be just right over here. The pressure plate is going to do one object. And it's going to spawn the destroyer block. That way we can just have an endless supply of destroyer blocks here for our destroying pleasure. Okay. So then we'll learn that we can spawn destroyer blocks. And now we need to start figuring out what we're going to do with the rest of the stuff. Okay. So I think for now, we'll put a attack tower here. It's going to go to the right. Um, and just kind of fire projectiles. And let's grab more of our stuff here. I'm just going to drag this across here. So that way the uh, player can move down a destroyer block, push it into an attack tower, and figure that out. But not only that, what we should do is also get a pitfall here, I think. Okay. And we're going to grab our spawn point and drag it in there. This will teach the player they can destroy attack towers, they can destroy um, pitfalls. Actually, you know what? Maybe, let's move this over one. The attack tower I'll leave there. Let's open up the collider one more time. Do that, do that, and erase that. There we go. I want the player to be able to try to get a destroyer block down here to get across the void, just so they can see what would happen, right? Um, so, they're going to spawn a destroyer block, they're going to push it down to here, push it over to here, and they can either push it into the attack tower to determine, oh, the attack tower could be destroyed by the destroyer block, or they will push it down into the pit and see that the destroyer block destroys the pitfall. Okay. So that takes care of the attack tower and the pitfall needing to be destroyed. Next we have portals and gates. You know what we could do? I could add a portal here because the portals also take the uh, Thing here, and I can have it go over here. Man, if the destroyer blocks could destroy the, the level walls, that would just be the chaos, because then they could get outside. That wouldn't be any fun. For me, anyway. The walls are reinforced with anti-destroyer block magic. Okay. So we've got those two portals. So if we hit play, the projectile from the attack tower should travel through the portal, end up over here, and continue on its way. Or it'll get destroyed?
Good pun. I guess because it just it collides with the portal. So if I make a case portal and just do nothing with that, it should continue. Let's see if it does. Oh. Uh-oh. The, uh, the attacks, they're confused. Um, why does that happen? Is it because I'm changing their velocity? Hmm. I probably should have uh, <clears throat> kept the game going so that I could have selected one of the projectiles and saw what uh, was happening here. The projectile. Vision body. Stop, pause. Okay. Open up the rigid body info. It should show me velocity, which is quite low. If we look at it here. It's still moving at a little bit of velocity, but it's not the right velocity. So what I might have to do is check for player and do Private Vector 3, Raj Velocity, equals new Vector 3, like that. OK. And so then we want to check if collision.gameObject.tag equals, oops. Projectile, if I spelled it right. We then want to. Which is probably an else if right there. Okay. Right, semicolon. All right. Let's grab this same thing. Oh, well, I guess this thing. So, first of all, if it's just projectile, we want to take the proj velocity equals collision dot get component I guess I have to do game object and then dot get component and then rigid body 2d dot velocity that'll save the velocity right and then I can down here do collision dot game object dot get component rigid body 2d oops dot velocity equals product velocity so after it moves it should keep the same velocity that it had previously let's see if this works Well, nothing changed. Hmm. Didn't get any errors, right? No, no errors. Is it because once it hits, it...
So the portal, the colliders are not triggers. I have no idea why it's a vector three if there's only an X and a Y. It's it literally makes no sense. Well, I guess actually it does make sense. It's because uh even though it's a 2D game, there's still technically a Z. But since it's a rigid body 2D, it only has an X and a Y value. Yeah, that's why. Oof, okay. So... What I could do is in the portals. These are capsule colliders. I could add a circle collider that is a trigger that is a bit bigger than that, right? Trigger, make it a bit bigger. That way, do this in a second. When I go back into the script, I can remove this line of code. And since this is a on collision, I can then do a on trigger enter 2D if collision dot game object dot tag equals projectile. We can then do this equals projectile. Yeah. So this, because I think what happens is if I were to have it here, what was happening is because it hit something and it could no longer move, the velocity just turned to zero, essentially, or as far to zero as it could go. Um, however, if we grab the velocity before it stops, we can then reassign the velocity on the other side of the portal. So let's test that out now. It should work if my logic is sound. Boop, and it goes. And it even like recenters it on the portal. Perfect. I mean, of course it does. But, uh, so yeah. So once the, uh, the projectile reaches the, the trigger, it sends its velocity in. So that way, the projectile can get assigned its old velocity on the other side of the portal. Beautiful. Cool. Okay. I don't know why I hit stop. So, as the player, you can do this. You can spawn that and be like, okay, that's a destroyer block. And you be like, I'm gonna go through this portal. And you go through the portal and then there's essentially like nothing to do over here is what the plan is going to be. So then you'll be like, well, what if I take the destroyer block, which for some reason is slipping around, and uh, what if I push it into here? Oh, the portal got destroyed. Well, that's not great. Um, also, what I should do is I need to run a check. in here. You want to check if and I want to do uh, portal a dot get act, act uh, I guess it's active self, right? We'll take all of this and put it into here. 
So this way, it's always going to check unless it's a destroyer block. Um, if, if, so if the object is not a destroyer block, it's then going to check, okay, is the portal A and B active? If portal A is not active, you won't be able to use portal B, and if portal B is not active, you won't be able to use portal A. So essentially, it stops you from going through a one-way portal, or like a portal that doesn't have an exit, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Go ahead and set this aside. Okay, so we've shown the portal can be destroyed. Excellent. Okay. So what do I do on the other side of the portal? Uh, I need to do something. Like obviously I need I need some sort of reason for this portal to exist other than just destroying it, right? So what if I add a little room here and in this room I place a lever right and this lever operates a gate that is down here that you need to flip in order to get out we start visible and then an object to change is going to be right there. Cool. So the player has to go through the portal first, flip the lever while also avoiding the projectiles coming through it, and disable this gate, and then we're going to have other stuff in here, eventually. So it'll look something like this in the beginning of the game. They're going to see the destroyer block, push it, and destroy that, spot a new one go around, go down here, flip this lever, go back through the portal, avoid getting shot or else everything's gonna reset, which uh, means they have to go through here, back up through here, and then avoid that. And then they can, I guess, push the destroyer block down, have it get destroyed, try to move through the portal or whatever. What about a block that can push a portal instead of going through it? And a puzzle where you have to push a portal through a gate or something. I could? I don't know, that seems like a... Hmm. Because then I would have to make logic for the portal to move to. I don't know, I, I could do it with the inverse block, I suppose, but that just seems a lot of work. It's a good idea. I just don't know if I want to use it. Damn it. There we go. I forgot I made these uh, slide around because they're volatile things. So then you destroy that, and then the player can be like, oh, I'm going to destroy that void block so I can get destroyer blocks out into the uh, area there. I'm, I'm sneaky. He he he. I'm just going to push this down here, all the way across here, and then, oh, the destroyer block got destroyed that time. <laughs> nice, okay. So in addition to getting a destroyer block through the pitfall and whatnot, I think it would be nice to have some stuff down here that it has to destroy. Uh, that way, we can show it destroying more stuff as well. Okay. So, how about we get a movable block here, a immovable block here. Why the movable block? A red herring. Because you might think, oh, well, I have to come back through here with a, a movable block and put it there or whatever. But you're not gonna be able to. So the movable block's there just to make the player think, huh, so I have to get that into that. Interesting. 
right? Cool, cool, cool. So, those are done. So next, I'm gonna grab that and that in order to put another gate here. So this gate, it's going to be destroyed with a destroyer block. That's how that gate right there is going to be destroyed. So that lever you have to use to unlock this one. You can't get a destroyer block around a corner. It's just impossible. Uh, so that will be like that. We still need to destroy... I guess that's going to be the gate there. Um... Oh, I just thought of something. The player can do this and just screw themselves over. That is hilarious. Okay, so... I guess I would want some reason to destroy a pressure plate. But what would that reason be? Why would I want to destroy a pressure plate? So, in theory, I could have a conveyor belt moving a block around that's hitting a pressure plate every time it goes past it on a conveyor belt and that pressure plates would say spawn something and then you can use a destroyer block to destroy the pressure plate or the block on the conveyor belt i guess but why? What else do I have? I have an inverse block that needs to get destroyed. Okay. So inverse block, movable block, pressure plate, lever, and another destroyer block needs to get destroyed. Okay. Well, I think I can just go like this. And then... Uh, maybe... Like... That. And then we grab a inverse block and put it here, because the player will have to pull it. And then they're gonna have to use a destroyer block to destroy it right there. Which will all fix that problem. But why would you destroy a lever? Like, what would the purpose of destroying a lever be? The lever just gets destroyed. So I guess if it's blocking your path, you could destroy the lever. That would be really the only reason to do so. Okay. Well. Why don't we do this? Then not negative nineties down. Okay. And then let's do this one left. One eighty for the rotation. Over here, over here, and then we want to go up with this one. 
and then that one is just going to be 90. Up to there. Okay. And let me just see, if I do put a movable block onto this, does it start by moving or not? It does, okay, cool. That's what I wanna see. So now if I grab a pressure plate, put it here, and then have it be set to one in layer, and then have it move its spawn position down to say here, and have it spawn movable blocks. Whenever that block goes around, it'll hit that and start spawning blocks. For just the one. Excellent. Okay. Perfect. So, <clears throat> let's go ahead and duplicate this one. And I'm gonna move it over there. Don't you wanna just zero you out? Oops, not that one, sorry. that and now I should be able to put it there there we go okay now I can move that over there and if we hit play now it'll hit both of these okay let's get two more let's set these back to zero zero so I can move the blocks properly. We'll put one pressure plate there, one pressure plate there, and grab this guy and put him there, and this guy and put him there. Hit play, and now it should be going around hitting these all the time. Which means, if we go into our scene and move my character, Once we try to move this, it's going to spawn another block. Try to move it again, it's going to spawn another block. Which gets kind of annoying, right? Okay, that's what's going to happen. We'll move those later. Um, for now, what I will do is let's grab another up conveyor belt that. Let's grab our walls. I just want that one there. Go. That way we have a uh, kind of enclosed room here and that's going around. And then we can throw a bunch of destroyer blocks in there to destroy all the stuff. In fact, why don't I put another block there? <laughs> that is so annoying. Oh my god. I love it. Oh my god, imagine playing this level and this is happening the whole time. It's like someone's clicking a pen in your ear. <laughs> so evil. Okay. Okay. So, what you're gonna want to do then is, um, first of all, Let's go ahead and, uh, I guess not those. Let's add these in here. And then, you know what? Let's make this a nice enclosed little room thing. I don't want that one. 
here. And then this thing goes... This one. Okay. So that way, though, the player's not tempted to go in and, like, stop them from moving, right? So they can't really push them off the conveyor belts. They would just kind of get stuck in there if uh, if they try. At least that's the theory. I mean, I'm, sure, I'm sure you could go in there and, like, if, if you go here and the block comes in here, you could, could kind of push it out of the area. And if the player really wants to do that, then fine, let's let them. But uh, we'll just do that for now. And so we need to make sure that these are, those are all spawning there still. So perfect, I'll just extend this wall up to there. So there is a movable block, sure. However, if you move the block in there, another one's just gonna spawn behind you, which isn't gonna do you much help because you're gonna to need to use this pressure plate here to spawn a destroyer block here and do that and that. So you're gonna to have to get a destroyer block into this room. But because there's constantly movable blocks spawning, I mean, you could put a destroyer block here, but it would get destroyed immediately and then spawn another block before you can get a new one up there. You need to get a destroyer block in this room to destroy this gate. And looking at things, I'm gonna have to move that down a little bit, unfortunately. So let's go back to the tile palette because we have to be able to push it down. So let's grab that. And that, that goes there. And we delete that tile so the player can push their uh, destroyer block into this room. And then they can go around and push it down to destroy the gate. Perfect, that's the puzzle. Cool. Um, so now we need to just grab the pressure plate spawns and move them down. Make sure those are the right things here. Yep, okay. Okay. All right, hit play. So let's test this out. So we push this, destroy that, grab that. I'm just gonna push this down there. I'm gonna go through here, hit the switch, go down, oop, oh, oh, oh god. Go down through here. We're going to push this over to here. I'm just gonna destroy the attack tower to get rid of it. Let's also destroy this portal just so it's out of the way so I can push this down more easily. Go over here. A little further, there we go. Oh man, you really have to line this up. Destroy that pitfall. Then you could go out already. Go to that thing. But where's the fun in that, right? There's another destroyer block down here. And if, if we can, uh, if we can, I said if we can move it. Oh my god, is it stuck? There we go. What if I hit like both at the same time? If we go past here, we uh, can either get rid of the block by pushing the destroyer block up and then over, or get it out of the way like this. Excellent. So obviously we can go through uh, here, but oh, a new block spawned, okay. So what if we spawn this? Okay, that spawns a destroyer block. What happens if we push this over to here? Okay, it got destroyed, but Unfortunately, not enough time to get us where we want to go. So we can push this up here, destroy that block, add another one. Oh, that destroyed the pressure plate. Oh, -ho. basically we just keep doing this until either the block is destroyed or the pressure plates are destroyed, which it actually might be the uh, pressure plates that get destroyed first. Oh, 
Um, I just noticed that the uh, when you destroy the pressure plate, the blocks they spawn also get destroyed. Interesting. Anyway, we're going to push this over here. I'm going to go around here, push it over here. Push it down, push it over, push it. It's stuck, it's stuck. There we go. Okay, push it down there. And uh, wham bam, level complete with everything except for a lever destroyed. Which is unfortunate that I couldn't destroy a lever, but I think it's fine. How often are you gonna need to destroy a lever? Basically never. So, uh, that's everything working as it should. Okay, so our only real concern is destroying the pressure plate with the destroyer block when you still need stuff from it. I'm just gonna real quick destroy this portal. So I can get this like down easier. There we go. So if we destroy this, that destroyer block should be destroyed too. Yeah. Which is not ideal. <laughs> so. We need to change the parent in the pressure plate script here. Um, pressure plate, pressure plate. Uh, I need the pressure plate script. There we go. Okay, so this should be pretty simple. Uh, when we instantiate an object, we want to um, I think just go game object we call it object What is this? Why identifiers? What do you mean identifiers? Am I hold on? Is object a special keyword? It is. Okay. Or it was an object that I've already I've already named something object or something? I don't know. Anyway. Um let's call it OTS for object to spawn. There we go. An OTS dot parent. Is that what I want to do? No, object dot transform dot is it transform dot parent equals this dot transform dot parent. But I think that should set the parent to be not the pressure plate, but the parent of the pressure plate. I think. So I just copy this to the other instantiates. Okay, that's the only thing that spawn stuff, right? Yep, okay. Let's test it now and see what happens. I have errors in the compiler. Remember, OTS cannot be used because it's declared oh right because it's already declared somewhere else i can't fucking declare it somewhere else okay so ots2 ots2 why do you have an error you know i'm just gonna go ots3 and ots3 and that should get rid of all the errors right okay Apparently this destroyer block OTS overwrote that destroyer block. Whatever, it's fine. It's as long as the the thing does what I want it to do. That's all that matters. That's the one thing I don't like about cases, is you can't have multiple declarations of variables here. All right, so now if we spawn this, and we hit pause, we can see the destroyer block is no longer a child of the pressure plate. It's actually a child of the uh, items section. So, oops, I did. I did. I meant to hit on pause, not. 
that. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and shove this over here. Move that down to there, and do that, of course. Let's just move that against the wall. Spawn everyone. Okay. So now, if we take this and go over here, that one remains. Excellent. That should be the same for all these pressure plates as well. So, good stuff. Save. I don't know why I saved when we're uh, just going to be hopping level down here. So this level is completed. Okay. Good stuff. So, level five. We need to add the endpoint here. To six. There we go. Okay. Now, also level 26, we need to, or not 26, 16, we need to add in our dialogue. So we need to come up with something. Um, so, first of all, let's uh, focus on our items here. So we can think while looking at what the map is about. How about this time, let's add a new block into the E. I feel like that's not how you spell the equation. I'm going to say fun instead. Let's add a new block into the fun. And then I'll leave it up to you to determine what exactly this new block does. It's safe to touch, I swear. Okay, so that'll kind of give the player a hint. If it wasn't obvious that since they're locked in a room with one block and that's all they can do is they have to push it, um, it'll kind of give the player a hint that, oh, the block is kind of dangerous or something. Um, so they'll try to push it, kill the immovable block, and then be able to continue the level. Mm. Ugh. Fuck. Okay. Ugh. Excellent, so that is level 26, finished with the dialogue added. I just want to make sure I have dialogue for all of these real quick. I want to make sure I didn't forget one of them. Okay, perfect. All right, so we have all the dialogue finished. Those. Level 26, you're done. Get out of here. I, I keep calling it 26, 27 because it's 2-7, <laughs> but it's really 16, 17. Okay. Items. There's a default parent. So now if we look at the prefabs, everything has been added and everything has been used. So now we can, instead of focusing on one particular block per level, I think for seven to 10 or 17 through 20, I mean, what we're going to do is we're just gonna incorporate various elements and go from there. And then starting on um, level 21, we can go ahead and add the ice and the other block and then potentially introduce the enemy there as well because the enemy will be what really um gives the player a run for its money as they'll have to you know, think about stuff i might have to introduce a nav mesh as well we'll see i think if we go to window duty there's AI navigation. If I had that. I can make a, a nav mesh out of this and if I hit fake. No? Select a mesh renderer or a terrain from the scene. If I do that and then I hit fake. No. Do I have to have like this? Um, do I do mesh renderer here? Can I add compile mesh renderer collider tile map? Because it puts me the existing tile map renderer. Right, 
component. Hmm. What if I add, you said terrain, right? I'm gonna have to look this up and figure out what exactly it does. Um, Unity, how to make a nav mesh with a tile map 2D in the game. Um, let's see, how to create nav mesh in Unity 2D. The video, I don't want to look at the video. Nav mesh and tile maps. I'll probably set up a nav mesh for my tile map so I can put it put in pathing for my sprites in a maze or something. Here's how it's done. Well, this is a GitHub thing. I really do not know what GitHub really like does. There's so many like things in GitHub. I can almost like a code database. Like, it's like a download thing. I don't know. I don't even know what it is. Fuck it. Um, this looks like a component extension for it, which I would have to download and yeah, I'd have to add that into the thing. But a more efficient way to clean an act. Make 3D cubes and assign them 2D sprites and say your file. Um, free time after nav mesh. Yep, that just brings back to the nav mesh plus. Um, here's the code to create a nav mesh from scratch using 2D colliders in case it's useful to anybody. Ah. Huh. It seems like it'd be really complicated to do. I was thinking I would do this, otherwise the uh, the the guys would just like kind of run into build a nav mesh in 2D games for Unity. Does anyone know if you can build one? This just says no, you cannot create a nav mesh for a tile map because it requires a mesh slash mesh renderer, which would conflict with sprite renderers used in most 2D components. This guide walks through what appears to be a 2D recreation of a nav mesh. And this guide is. In a typical 2D game base, you would restrict your yada yada yada. Okay. What if... What if we just watch a video? Screw it. Give me a... Uh, this. Let's just check this out. And see what this guy says in a 20 minute video. Hold on. Is this, it's just gonna say use nav mesh plus, isn't it? Okay, so now we need to install the nav mesh plus from the GitHub. This is the page and yeah. I'll put the okay. link in the description. Just use nav mesh plus. Okay, okay, thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, so you, you can't. I was just like, man, I really wanted to make like a pathing thing because if I don't, and I'll have like a movable block here and the, uh, the the, the 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 enemy would just kind of get stuck behind it, right? Bummer. I might look into doing that. Like, wait, I might I might like off screen. I'm, I'm looking to figure out how to add like navigation for a enemy. So like, if I have a block, for example, um, and there's an enemy on one side of it and I'm on the other, I want the enemy to like path around it to get to me. And I know in 3D you can use this navigation nav mesh thing. However, um, if you don't have any, you can't put a nav mesh on like a tile map collider, so it wouldn't allow you to do that. But yeah, pathfinding for that. So I'm not sure how to do it in 2D without using this nav mesh plus thing or like making a huge thing out of it. So maybe between streams, I'll install nav mesh uh, plus and uh, we can do that next time or something. Well, not maybe next time. Like, I'm not going to use it until like level 30, 40, something maybe when we actually add the enemy in. But Apple. Oh, I guess that's also one thing I did in my Doom like game is I added some nav mesh stuff. But anyway, all right, so. Where do we want things to end here? 
I think we can just go ahead and add another one right there. Screw it. Why not? That'll be fine. And then we can move down our end level down to there. Spawn point is going to once again be up here. Put us in the complete upper left, correct? Yep. Nice. This is... In this video, we're going to learn how to implement A-star pathfinding in Unity. We're going to set up our world in a grid with some areas blocked and implement the algorithm to calculate valid paths. Then in a future video, we're going to apply this same algorithm using Unity Dots. Let's begin! Let's see... Subscribe. Okay, so this is what we want to create. Over here is our map with the grid visible. And you can mm -hmm. see some black squares which represent the areas that are not blockable. Now in here I have my character and I can click to tell him where to go. When I click the path is calculated and he then follows that path. Right. We can enable the debug view in order to see what's going on inside the algorithm. So over here you can see the various values that the algorithm uses and you can see it looking around for all the neighbors. It After bugs me. Through the entire process, you can... it, it, it bugs me that the lowest values are red and not green. Um, I just want to put that out. See that it located the correct path. All right, so this is our goal. Let's get to it. So before we get to the code, let's first check out the theory. The goal of the A-star pathfinding algorithm is to search to find a path from A to B. So the algorithm already detects walkable and unwalkable areas and correctly identifies the shortest path from A to B. Our map will be grid-based. From each grid position, we can move in all eight directions. On each node, essentially, we have three values. First, we have the G cost. That is the walking cost from the... Sure. Okay. So over here is my starting scene. Let's start off by making a new c -sharp script. Call this our pathfinding. Now in here, let's get rid of all this and get rid of mono behavior. And let's make a constructor that receives a width and a height. God. Who codes with a white background? What is this guy doing? My guy, are your eyes okay? Okay, now we want to set up our pathfinding in a grid. So for that, let's use the grid class that we created in the previous video. Here is the oh, class. Oh, of course, we need a previous video now. Grid with a certain width and height. Now, we created this completely from scratch in a previous video, so God, check to look in at. the description if you haven't seen it already. So using this class, let's go into our pathfinding, and in here, let's create our grid. So up here, we define a field for our grid, and now in here, we require a grid object, so let's make one. In here, let's make a new C-sharp script, and let's call this the path node. So this will represent a single node in our pathfinding grid, mm -hmm. so let's make a constructor. Here, let's receive the normal stuff that we create in our grid. Okay. So essentially, if I wanted to use this, this guy's method of, Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm, I'm going backwards. But let's go to this nice, lovely, non-wipe screen. There's the pathfinding. There is the costs, neighbors, cycle, testing, finding path. Okay. But yeah, essentially, we would need to make a grid uh, so it, like, knows the grid layout of the thing and whatnot, and then also add uh, a pathfinding thing. How would we make... What, what, what does neighbors mean? God. It's just, it's so bright. Okay, I, I don't think I'm going to go this route. First of all, I don't think I could watch the video long enough to figure out what he's doing because my eyes would literally kill themselves. Um, but yeah, I don't know. And it seems like there's this nav mesh plus thing, which uh, I could probably use anyway. Maybe a lot simpler. So we might go with that. Anyway. Ugh. Okay. <clears throat> How do we want to do this? So, last level we introduced the last new element that we had for now. There are two other elements we could add uh, later, but 
Why is save things? Need saving. No. I, I didn't fucking delete something in here, did I? Okay. I thought maybe I deleted the canvas again or something. I was gonna be like, God damn it, no. Why? Okay. Whew. It was I don't know what happened. I don't know why that uh you did saving. Weird. Anyway. Maybe because I just dragged something onto here and it spawned in there by default. That's probably it. Okay. Uh, so. What should we do? We did just introduce the destroyer block, so it would be useful to use at least one of them in this game. Or this level, I suppose. But using it right away would be meh. Perhaps. Perhaps we need to guide a destroyer block through a level, avoiding other blocks, and hitting a gate at the end. That can be useful, especially because they're really volatile and they slide around a lot. So having to navigate through like a very specific tight corner maze would be just freaking annoying. So let's do that. Add these heat. I just remembered something and we need to stop what we're doing and go do that real quick. Um, hey, level level uh, 2-6. <laughs> I see you need your, your game objects assigned here so we can reset the level properly. Let's do that now. <laughs> that would have been horrible if we'd have forgotten that. Uh, I'd have been like playtesting and been like, why won't this level freaking reset? Okay, so I only have one attack tower. That's easy. Portal. Just have one of those. So that's easy too. Pressure plates, simple enough. Lever, gate. Pitfall. Immovable blocks. Um, don't have any cages, don't have an enemy. I think the only thing left to reset is going to have to be the destroyer blocks and the movable blocks. That's fine. So let's go destroyer blocks first. Two of them currently on by default. And the movable blocks there. Okay. And now we need to add uh, five block spawns, so one, two, three, four, five. And then we're just gonna add these guys into the spawn points. Okay. So remember, we need to have these spawn points in the order that they are there. So destroyer block, it's that one. Destroyer block, it's that one. This one's going to be a movable block. This one is gonna be that movable block. And this one is going to be that movable block. There we go. All right, so that's everything there assigned once again. Whew, almost forgot about that. That would have been crazy. I, I remembered the dialogue this time, but forgot to assign those things. So perfect. Okay. Back to level 17. Okay. So we need to get a destroyer block from point A to point B. I think. The best thing to do would be to get a pressure plate. That spawns a destroyer block. I'm just going to make it here. And then boop, boop, boop. There we go. Okay. So we have that, it'll spawn a destroyer block. So let's go ahead and we'll just wall off this area right here. If we can select the right tile map. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, um, so spawn point is up there, endpoint's down there. Excellent. Okay, so we're gonna spawn up in this corner. We'll hit that and have to go through here. 
So, we need to navigate through a treacherous maze of different things and stuff and all that good jazz. So, um, before we get too far into that, let's add a couple more of these tiles here, I think. Let's go up to here. Go through there, so we'll kind of go through there, and go down through here and all that. Um, yeah, maybe we go from here over to, like, here? Yeah, that could work. That could work. Okay. Of course, you could just brute force the puzzle by continuing to spawn destroyer blocks and destroy everything in its path. Um... We might work out a solution to avoid them doing that, but we'll see what happens. Okay. So. I need to grab a, this tile and place that there. Other than that, I think other tile looks good. Yep, yeah, okay, cool. Back to this. So. Let's start out. I think it would be nice. Well, I say nice, but... I think it'd be funny to just have a bunch of attack towers lined up down here that are attacking, right? So let's do one here. You want to go then left like this. Here and up to here. So they're going to we can play kind of fire in like a, a diagonal-ish sort of thing like this. Bloop. They all pass by each other. It allows you to spawn this here. The obvious thing to do here is to just take this and push it down. Take this, push it down to get rid of I destroyed myself with one of the uh, things down there. Anyway. Destroy those towers, and then basically we want to do more or less the same thing here. Being careful with this, we'll just go ahead and start destroying the towers. And more easily... Oop, that one's going to hit that. It's fine. Oop. Be able to more easily maneuver through this. Okay. However, we should put some stuff in the middle here to also create some problems, so you can't just destroy them right away, right? Um, let's add some immovable blocks to this area, shall we? The attack tower is foreground, so they're going to be above that, so... We're going to copy a couple of movable blocks here between the towers. Like that. Perfect. And then, if we can kind of make a... hodgepodge of them here, so the player basically has to push it down now to, like, here so it's safe. We hit play. Oh, no! I can't have a movable block there because it'll uh, prevent the thing from spawning. Okay. I think I can make it go, like, here? If I just put it down one. Let's try. If not, I'll just delete them. But I want something to kind of protect the, uh, the attack towers, right? There we go. They all work. Okay. So as you can see, we can hit this. And we'll have to push it down through here, but miss because I am an idiot. Okay, so that destroyed that attack tower. This will destroy that attack tower and also reset me because I am an idiot who died. So. Of course, we can't really move this block any further to the right without destroying that block first. We can come down through here, and almost the best option would be to, if the block wants to move, I don't know why sometimes it, like, just hits a flat wall and is then not able to move. I 
mean, I know why. I'm getting stuck on the tile map for some reason. But, yeah, okay, that'll be... Uh, really, I'm actually curious. So, Unity 2D, straight tile map collider sometimes causes you to get stuck on a straight wall? Rigid body getting stuck in tile wall. To set your physics material to your wall, and that should fix it. it. Doesn't seem to fix it for me though. I also tried playing around with the friction and bounciness. Um, the speakers. Do so, so, so they're saying. Um, what is physics material? Right here. Can I just. No. What is that? They said assign the physics material to your wall. But I don't have... Walls are made of tiles with 2D box colliders. Everything has one by one unit size. There's no gaps in the walls. Hmm. I don't see tile map. In this. I don't think they're using a tile map is the problem. There we go. Player gets stuck on edges between pile, tile map collider here. However, I ran the issue you using a tile map and a tile map collider 2D to display the world. Then I move the player out and someone gets stuck along the edges between squares of the tile map. Here's a gift showing the problem. Okay. Um, Answer, after trying to write a code that merges the squares effectively, especially for large tile mass, with horizontally and vertically, I decided to look if there's a better suited collider with the Polygon Collider 2D that I've been using. Which I then stumbled across a certain component, I feel a little stupid. The trick to avoid the problem I mentioned in my question involved ethically zero lines of code for the tile map Collider 2D. Tick. By composite, then add the component composite collider 2D. This will automatically add a rigid body to your object if it does not already have one. Change the body type to kinematic, unless you want a physical interaction with uh, the tile map, I don't think we do, and then prop it. Okay. Let, let's use discrete. I think continuous uses more like processing code. So they're saying that doing this should, and also if you look at the tile map now, um, it's not made up of little squares, it's all like one block. Interesting. So if I just kind of go down through here, if I just like go across this wall. Huh. Yeah, I'm not getting stopped. Okay, so let's, on my level prefab here, on the tile map collider, let's add that to all of this before I forget. So we want to do enigmatic. We want to, what was, was there anything we did here? Change body type to that. Add a composite collider. And that was all we had to do. Okay. Let's save our prefab. But that doesn't help anything for these levels, so we're going to have to go through our levels one by one and add those over again. So, boom. Boom. Luckily, it doesn't take too long. It's just going to take a minute to do that.
And this will really help in the long run for all of our stuff, I think. Oh, incidentally, maybe I should, while I'm going through these anyway, make these squares actually like lined up with stuff, right? Let's do that. Let's take our immobile blocks and actually do this to them, so that they're not just like in a mess of like random placements. It is going to take a minute for some of these levels, but better to do it now than have to do it a little later, right? I want everything nice and lined up and perfect. That's one thing I noticed when I was playtesting previously to get screenshots is that it was just, it looked a little bad when everything wasn't lined up to a, a, a grid square, right? Also gonna have to move all these. I, I, I can't just do this, right? Surely not. Looks like the answer to that is no. Or is it? No. Yeah, I can move them all at like a space, but I can't have them snap properly. It'd be good for movement, but not good for getting them exactly where I want. Okay. That's fine. Make sure this one has the thing. Perfect. Save. Okay. Uh, that was level three. Supposed to be level four. Jesus Christ, this is going to take fucking ever. <gasps> Surely there's a way to, to make these, like, round up to the nearest thing. Right? I really don't want to move these one by one. <laughs> Why did I have to make stuff with so many... Uh, things? <laughs> I am the big dumb. God, there's so many of them. Is it like a shortcut greed? A shortcut key to like snap to grid or something? No? Says use control plus the backslash, or is that a forward slash, to move game objects onto grid on all axes. Alternatively, from the grid overlays toolbar. What is this? Focus mode not active. No? No? It's alt. Um, let's undo that because that looks right. Um, alternatively, from the grid and <coughs> snap overlays toolbar, drop down menu. Oh? Okay. What if I grab all of these then, drag this down, and do this? Oh. Okay. I mean, they're not exactly there, but they're basically as close as they can without me having to manually touch each and every one. So that's a huge win. We're going to go with that. Hit level 1-5 next. 
Polymap Collider, use composite mode, add the composite, switch to Kinematic, grab all of our blocks. I think this is just a block map too, right? Yep, it's just a block map. So we're just gonna grab everything here. Go to this, do all axes snap to grid. Mm. God, God, I love Google. It's, it's such a helpful tool. Okay, that was level five. Let's open level six next. File map collider, composite, use by composite, enigmatic. Now we actually have pitfalls and stuff, which I think. This block's not aligned. I think the pitfalls and stuff are aligned. Is this when I started to line things up properly? I don't know why this block isn't lined up. Every other block seems to be lined up though. Okay. Maybe it was just those first couple levels. I think after like I hit like this level, I think I started to be like, okay, let's actually snap stuff to the grid. Yeah, okay, perfect. Don't have to worry about that anymore. So, composite, composite. Fucker? Okay. Heavy medic. Save. Eight. File map collider. Use composite. Add composite. Enigmatic. Save. I'm glad I found out about this now. And not like after I've built all the levels. Which is nice. I was gonna do this for every single level 50 times. That'd be pretty annoying. Okay. Like, and that's just like another thing about you know learning uh, like game engine and all the stuff that it has is sometimes until you run into a problem, you just don't know that there's a feature that does something that you you know could find really useful. So. You might be thinking you're doing something the best way possible, but uh, then you're like, oh, do this this way? Shit. For example, um, in uh, my I'm Just a Slime game, the RPG one, when I was making maps, I didn't know that this tile map collider existed in the first place. And so I, when I was placing down like trees and background stuff, uh, I was taking a empty game object and I was going over every single thing with a box collider 2D. So my, my games would just look, or not my game, my maps in the early maps, they would just be a mess of huge box colliders that would prevent the player from like getting through uh, the, the sides of the map and stuff. It was so annoying, so tedious to do, and oh, I hated it. And then I, I, I don't remember what I was doing. I think I was just like messing around and I needed to add like a tile map or something just to something. And I saw an option that was called Tile Map Collider. And I was like, what? I think what I had done is I wanted to create like another like layer to my tile map. And so I had created an empty and I was like, okay, what's a what's a tile map need? Type from tile map stuff. I was like tile map and then I saw this tile map collider 2D and I was like, uh what? And so after I did that, I found out that, oh, there's a Tile Map Collider 2D that literally puts a collider around any block you use on your Tile Map. And I was like, son of a bitch. And that made making my levels so much faster and so much easier. Because up until I figured that out, it was taking me like an entire day to make a uh, collider for the edges of my maps. It wasn't fun, especially when it was like lime green on a lime green background. And I was like, is that okay? Is that work? Is that fine? Ah, truly awful stuff. This is even better. Learn something every day. Okay.
So, I've added those in here. A nice little movement puzzle with destroyable stuff and whatnot. Um, I could make it even more challenging by getting a void block in here so the player can't move it in certain little areas. I grab this, I can move it down here as well. Question, can the projectile go through the void block? I don't, I don't remember. It can. Well, that shouldn't be possible. I'm just gonna delete that void block, I think. And then, uh, hey, void block. You wanna pop open your code so I can take a look under the hood? So now the projectile will also destroy it in a void block. Cool. You set yourself a small challenge, it's gonna be interesting. What challenge did you set yourself, Ryle? There's actually a uh, um, game, I think it's a game jam, is what they call them, going on right now for the VTuber Iron Mouse. Um, I think it's entries start, I think it's today you can start entering stuff until like July 21st or something. Make like a game related to Iron Mouse, but uh, I was thinking about doing that when I first heard about it. However, I then realized I would have to make it related to Iron Mouse, and I have no artistic skill, so I could not do that. And I'm also already making a game or two, so... I decided not to. It'll be fun to see all the games people make for it, though. Like, it'll be interesting. In a 2D game, on awake, spawn a random number of primitives at random locations in range of random size. Hmm. Yeah, I see. So, like, you would spawn the primitives of a random size, or the like the the range is a random size. Create a room with a random obstacle course. Gotcha. Okay, so the primitives would be uh, random. Okay. The only trouble with that, I mean, if you're going for like a parkour kind of thing, is there might not be a solution. Um, depending upon the size they all generate. Because they all could spawn like higher than the player could jump or something, for example. Um, yeah. I see. I can see how that could be done. Now, to get the exact results you want, that could be a little trickier. Just like get the coordinates of all corners of the room to find the like coordinates that would be contained within it, you know. And uh, from there, you do a, a rand number kind of thing. And then find out how many primitives you're gonna spawn. Then you just place the first one. And then after the first one's placed, you just run a check to make sure that it's not colliding with the first one or the previous placed ones, for example. So like you would have an array or whatever of placed game objects and an array of non-placed game objects, unless you want them to potentially collide with each other. No, uh, but then you can do that and then be like, okay, if this is colliding, choose a different spot. And if there's nothing that it's gonna collide into there, spawn at a, another spot, you know? Um, and basically do that until it uh, cannot find any more spots. Or you don't want to do like do until, right? Until like everything is spawned. You want to set it like if you cannot find a place to spawn within like five attempts, stop trying to spawn. So 
So even though it's not the, the random number that was generated for the number of objects, uh, it will stop eventually. Yeah. Like, uh, like if you have a room and you want to spawn a hundred objects, uh, you place like 50 of them. <clears throat> you place 50 of them and then you determine that there's no more room for the rest of the 50 objects without colliding into other the other 50 objects that are already placed. Uh, it'll try to find a place five more times, and if it can't find a place in those five attempts, it then just ends, and those are the places that you have, those 50 objects. Or however many attempts you want to give it before it, it quits. And it's like, okay, I tried finding places, random places, and uh, it wouldn't fit anywhere, so there you go. Definitely fun. Definitely fun. In my uh, my 3D game that I'm I'm making, my Doom like one, I want to uh, procedurally generate levels. I think that's what it is. Procedure generate. Basically, I want to make uh, some like uh, what what were they called? Like compartments, right? Like sections of a level, like hallways and open rooms and tunnels and stuff like that and i want to give that into a like procedurally generated program and be like okay so you want to have at least an ending and a starting point and you need a straight line to be able to not a straight line necessarily but you need to be able to get from point a to point b do whatever you want in between as long as all the rooms connect to each other right I kind of do that Sort of thing. I'm like, maybe limit the rooms, like there can only be so many of this room or that room. You know. That's gonna be way down the line. Because first I wanna make uh like actually handcrafted levels for like the main story. And then have procedurally generated ones for like just extra content for the player to do, right? But I figure having like handcrafted levels, there's only so much I can think to create, right? But if I do procedurally generated, it could like do whatever. And then I can have like procedurally generated like monsters as well. Like give a give each room various lists of monsters and locations that they could spawn in. And then you kind of have it choose whichever one it wants as it goes through, right? It could be interesting. But God, first I need to determine if I have enough money to buy assets for that game before I get too far into creating it. And I need to finish this game first too, as well and think about whether or not I want to pay someone to make assets for this game as well and make it actually look better. I don't know. We'll see. There's so much I want to do and there is so little time to do it and so little money to do it with. And for some reason, I have a notification on my uh, Alexa. Stop. And I don't know why. Nothing's being delivered. It just all of a sudden did this. I'm gonna mute and see what it says. Apparently, it was telling me that there's a low price for an item on my wish list, which doesn't matter to me right now because the stuff on my wish list is stuff that I'm going to get shipped to my new place. So I'm going to do that like middle of next month. Anyway, so the Humble Bundle has decent stuff for Lost while. Yeah, I like check them sometimes, but the thing with creating the next game, like for this game, I don't care too much if I get like pre-used assets. But for the next one, the 3D one I'm making, I really want to polish it up, like really good. Like, I want people to like play Doom and then play my game and be like, God damn, this is basically as good as Doom, if not better. But uh, yeah, so I kind of want to make, have someone make the assets specifically for that game that are never going to be used in any other game so that we have 
just like a unique experience, right? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, for my uh, previous game, I I actually got pretty lucky in finding Mega Crash, the guy who makes the backgrounds for my previous game, whatnot. He does it very cheaply and they're very decent. And I was able to get like all the stuff from him for I think like $100, $200 was the total I spent on backgrounds for that game. It was very nice. I think it was like 32 bucks for like each sprite sheet that I asked him for for the backgrounds. Real good, real good price. And even the, uh, the, the sprite animator, Admarin, he who made the uh, little slime sprites that we're using, those were pretty good price too. I think it was like, God, was it $60 for these sprites? Including like a left right movement, a idle, an attack, and a, a movement animation for them. So, good stuff. Good stuff. But yeah. I think the, the most expensive thing is going to be music, though, for that game. Uh, yeah, music is always a pain. I have a lot of artistic contacts, but they uh, they don't make sprites. They make uh, other pictures. Yeah. Although since I've not been working and having an income, I haven't purchased much recently. It's just sad. I feel like at, at a certain point when I was working and making like a lot of money, I was basically single-handedly feeding artists for a while. I just being like, yo, make this freaking drawing, bro. And they would, and it was great. Okay. On the game. Uh, I've been doing nothing for like a moment here. Hard to multitask when you're like thinking of things to say. Also thinking of like, what am I going to put in this level? Right? Okay. So... The goal is to get the destroyer block all the way through here to this once again. So we probably want like what else can I do? I can add more attack towers. So you have to like push stuff through. Be very careful with it, right? And I can put another attack tower here have it go to the left when you go through this thing you have to be careful about it firing off right that would cover this whole line here and then i could do something like would that work I want to kind of have the player have to move the box like in a zigzag pattern. So they push it through here and they push it like down. Right, and then that would be here. They push it down and over. So I guess I would just use like these little blocks, wouldn't I? So I push it here. Push it over here. I have to go around over here. Down through here. I can get it out that way. Maybe. We do like this. Then that there, that there, that there. Would that allow enough room? Not for this one, I would not know. You can do it here. Easy enough. Kind of move here, move the block down over to here, move it up here, push it through here. I'm gonna have to get rid of these. That way you could move the block here, push it through here. 
then you would be able to move it down in time to avoid that. Yeah, I think we'll do that. And what we will need to do here is change this time to attack to, I think, 6.5 is what we had for the other one. So we'll do the same thing there. Let's increase the force to, like, 4. For that. So that's going to go all the way down to there. That'll be fun. Okay. What else should I do here? Hmm. So you're going to move it down through here. You're going to go around through here, then push it down through this way. So... You're going to want to push it along this wall. There's not really much else I can do with attack towers, since it would either be here firing this way, here firing this way, or here firing this way. And it's going to destroy pressure plates if I touch them. Otherwise, I could just have it go over pressure plates and spawn stuff in the way that would cause some problems. But... Hmm. Let's add a pitfall here. And we need to grab the spawn point, do it there. And then grab some mobile blocks. Them there, kind of create like a a line the player can't necessarily go down, right? And then at the end, I can do this. This will work. Let's see. Um, this would be 90, negative 90, of course. I always do the wrong one for the up or down. Not a try. Without fail. So we do that, right? So what is essentially happening is the player has to get it through this, through that, down through here, and then push it along here. And if they miss or they do not carefully nudge the block, it's going to go boop, 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 right into the uh, the pit. And they're going to go all the way back, grab a new one. Try it again. Also, um, they're going to push the block down here and have to go on the conveyor belts. And be careful to go down past them so that the uh, they don't fall in the hole. They have to go back. Oh man, that's that's dirty. And then they have to go through and destroy the gate with the destroyer block. I think that will be the plan for this. Right. Right, right, right. Okay. I feel like they should be up here as well, though. Like, otherwise, what's the point? I can also add another uh, removable block there. Um, so you'll go here, and then the easiest way to go is put it down here. But I could put something like here, like a, a pitfall right there. Oops. There we go. Let's, let's copy one. So I come through here, and I all have to grid on, sorry. Come through here, 
the destroyer block is there, you push it down, and you won't be able to just push it against the wall as quickly as possible. You're gonna have to like just barely nudge it to get out of the way of the firing line, then you have to go up to avoid getting shot. Because if you try to go down with both you and that thing, you might misjudge it and it'll slide into this pit. Very, very naughty. And then once it's like here, you can nudge it over to here, nudge it over to there, and then all the way down to there and over there. Cool. Yeah, I think that'll work. All right, let's give it a try. Boop. The hitbox is a little uh, wonky for the attack tower's edges there. So it looks like the only way to get this through this little area is to move it this way. Without destroying anything else, of course. Then we want to go here, move this up to there, move it up to here. Oops. I just messed that up. Oh, no, crap, you can't go any higher. Oh, that, this area is so dirty. It is so dirty. Holy crap. I completely forgot about that. Nope, I just destroyed that block. Oh, that destroyed that one too. Okay, well, you know what? Screw it. Fine. Brute force. Let's avoid the thing there. Let's just get this tower out of the way. Okay, almost messed that up there. Okay, so I think we can wait for this one to go. Oh no, go down, go down, please. Shit. I might have to adjust the uh, rate of fire of that. I'm just gonna take that block out. Ooh. How did, okay, I was about to say, how did the uh, projectile miss that destroyer block there? Crap. Ugh. Up, over, let's go, let's go. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. <sighs> Darn it, I would've had it. It wasn't for you meddling kids. Okay, you know what, let's, let's, let's get rid of this, uh, this other attack tower here. I'm tired of seeing it. It's just it's causing me undue stress. walls not colliding let's pretend they are wait for it and go i'm just gonna come through here down 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 over and down okay so first of all um let's take this attack tower let's increase its attack to seven seconds that'll be a little better and then File map. Apparently, I was using the, the wrong thing here. I'm not sure what level that's on. Is it the uh, foreground? No, above ground. It is, okay, above background. Uh, so let's go ahead and click the collider map and I'll go ahead and touch all these little things here quick. Give them collision. And we'll hit the erase marker above background. Get rid of the extra things here. And let me just double check the rest of the stuff does have collision. It does. Okay. Yay, you'd love to see it. Okay. Mm. So I think, was there anything else I wanted to change here? I 
don't think that there was. Maybe I make the destroyer block a little smaller. 0 0.9 maybe. That way it can more easily go through places. And it doesn't necessarily like clip on this stuff too much. So you can actually get it like down further. The problem here is that what you have to do is first slide this down here. Fucker. Okay. Wait for it to fire. Slide it. Hide. Move down here. Well, I think the first move you have to take is to destroy that tower. There's no real other way if you if you want to go for like the least amount of things destroyed. Oops. Wait for it to fire. Move to push. Because otherwise, you're not able to uh, move this block with that tower in the way. Now you can go like this. Wait for it, and go. Oops. Yeah, fuck it. But yeah, that, that's fine. That, that works. Um, there was one thing. Now that I think about it, resetting the level when you, like die it should not completely reset the timer i think it should drag on right the only time it should completely reset is when you hit the uh, escape button and choose the reset level option So let's add a, a thing down here for the reset level. So uh, private bool should, or I guess should reset equals false. I should reset timer reset. Okay. And what we'll do down here is do if timer reset equals true, we then want to reset the timer. Okay. That's what we'll do there. So that way, uh, if we want something to actually reset the timer, we'll do it. Otherwise, we're not going to have that happen. So how are we going to reset the timer? Well, let's do... Um, you know what? No, that's stupid. Let's just do a public void reset timer. Just thinking about how I'm going to reset the timer anyway. I think it's better if we just do this. It's the only time we're going to reset the timer is if the player hits escape, which means I need to open up the pause menu script, which I think is here. And for the reset level, we want to copy this and do reset timer as well. Reset the level first, this is the timer second, and that'll do that. Okay. So now anytime you um, were to, for example, get hit by a projectile, it won't reset you, it'll just reset the, the level. The projectiles and the enemy will kill you and reset the level. It won't reset your time, though. Okay. All right, so real quick, I'm going to go to the bathroom, get up and stretch and all that, and then we'll continue. Um, I'll think if I want to do anything else with this level or not before then as well, so be right back.
Okay. So I didn't have any ideas to add to this map. To add to this map. Um, but I did have a great idea for the next map. So I think we just leave this at that. Not the greatest level, but you know, it, it's it's something, right? So what we need to do is add all these things in here. <laughs> Not static, damn it. <coughs> okay. So Let's start with the immobile blocks, because there are a few of them. Let's get the gate next. The attack towers after that. There's no portals. There are some pitfalls, however. Uh, there are no levers, right? Uh, there's a pressure plate. And there's no movable blocks, no destroyer blocks that are available right now anyway. Um, so that's perfect. We don't have to worry about making any more extra spawn points or anything. And then we just need to work on the dialogue. So previously we had said uh, we were talking about the destroyer block. And we said all that stuff. So... We can say, not bad. Actually, what was the last level? Well, let's, let, let's just add this to prefabs and we'll figure. I completely forgot what we actually made for the last level, so. <laughs> okay, so um, let's open up level 26, end level, throw in level 2 7. I'm going to keep saying 26, 27 the whole time, aren't I? God damn it. Okay. So previously, we didn't really care about our destroyer blocks. We were just using them as expendables. And that was all we were doing. So, we'll say, not bad. But let's see how you do when you need to be more careful. And the thing is, you don't need to be careful because you have endless destroyer blocks. But we'll just say that anyway. I mean, because I mean, you could literally go through all of this and destroy every single um, obstacle, right? You know what? You know what? Do you know what? I think I'm gonna get rid of the pitfalls. All the pitfalls are going bye-bye. Which means we need to uh, remove them from this as well, or else it's going to cause issues. Go. Okay. I, I have a better idea for improvement. Instead of pitfalls, we shall use the block voids. Which will prevent the player from actually being like, I'm just gonna throw these all away and destroy everything, right? The player will actually have to be like, okay, I need to be careful with this. Because they could, you know, bring a bunch of destroyer blocks down here, destroy this one, push the thing down there and all that. But they can't just, you know, thoughtlessly push stuff down and whatnot. In fact, I could put another one up here as well. For when they get the, uh, the other block here. Like that. Let's do one more. There we go. Because if they do push the thing against the wall, uh, they're screwed anyway, right? But this gives them less wiggle room with the the thing here. Could I put a destroyer block anywhere else? Hmm. I mean, I could in theory. 
replace these immobile blocks here, like this one and that one, with a destroyer block. Or a void block, sorry. Which one is this one? I might I might just replace that one with one. There. Okay. Let's add all these back into the items section. And then we'll need to remove one of those mobile blocks here. There we go. Okay. There we go. I think that'll be the new level. Um, rather than what we had before. The pitfalls, they're just not as important. I mean, the, the pitfalls, you can just get rid of it once, right? Whereas the, the void blocks, or the block voids, they can be like, no, you can't move a block here, right? So that's, that's good. Um, yeah, regardless, we're gonna have to destroy this tower so that they at least can move into this lane and move a block to one of these slots where they can then go down and move it up to here where they can then navigate it through this. Have to be very careful not to slide it into this block void, or they can just destroy this tower, whichever they think is easiest. And then they have to go down through here, move it across here, and then they could sacrifice a destroyer block to destroy one of these early, and not have to potentially risk it going down a conveyor belt and just ruining its life down here. Or they can just push it down here, push it over there, go across the conveyor belts, or across one of the, uh, uh, I guess they could just go push that down there and go over there and through that, so they don't have to worry about the, uh... So they don't have to worry about a pitfall being there anyway, so that's fine. We'll rock with that. So, <clears throat> not bad, but let's see how you do when you need to be more careful. A slight wrong move can cause you to need to start over entirely. Yeah. We'll do that. Thumbs up. Okay. We'll save that. So, that'll be a fun little level, I say. Anyway, so now, for the uh, the next one that I actually thought about here. Let's make sure this is... Okay. <laughs> Also, real quick, I, I'm going to set all these to be active because I need to do this, add the composite to all of these before I forget about that. Because that would not be... Actually, I think I can just select multiple at the same time here. Oh, I don't have to do them one by one. Excellent. Okay, now we can do that to get rid of those. That and that, and then we can do that. Okay, so what my plan for this one is, is I want to make the player have to go through the maze once to like pull a lever at the end, go back through, and use what the lever like unleashed for them, basically. Right. So, what I need to do is figure out what the hell I'm doing. Okay. So, I think we're going to have the end be down here. But we need to select the right tile map layer. Okay. There's that. And the player... I think we'll start this time in the upper right. Here's the player. If I hit play, he should spawn right in the... I don't know why I touched my screen in real life. Like, did it matter? Okay. Yeah, he spawns right here. So, what we are going to see, I do believe, is hmm so how do I want to do this I guess I could do that so 
what I'll start out with doing is we're going to add a conveyor belt here. Make it go, I think 90 is up, right? Yep, okay. Make it go up. And we want to copy this and make another one here. I think I want to drag them down, actually. Down, down one. One square there. Okay. Because... I want to get my tile map thing here. Oop, what am I doing? What am I doing? Grab this. And then we want to get that there, that there, there, that there, and then these here, and that there. At least that's what we'll do for right now. And then we want to add a gate to this one. And we want to add in two movable blocks, one here and one here. Darn. I'm gonna have to go back one more. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Move them down one here. Then we'll just grab one more conveyor belt on it down there. So essentially, when we hit play, what's going to happen is that the two uh, movable blocks, they're going to just move up there. So that way, they're kind of constantly pushing against this gate, right? There's nothing we can really do right here, right? But what we will do is in our tile palette, we're gonna add that there. Also, I might as well do this and that, and then I guess just add that there and go over to this wall where we will do this and that. There we go, okay. The player starts up here. We have these two open areas right here, which don't necessarily matter right now uh, for us. However, I, what we are going to do is now place down attack towers, which will start here and here. This attack tower needs to be moved up one in the layer, and both of them will attack to the right and I think we'll just leave the thing here for right now. So what's going to happen? Player spawns in. Projectiles are going to shoot down this corridor here. Right over to here, just barely missing the player, mind you. Right. That's thing one. Thing two that we're going to do is get a pressure plate right next to the player. And it is going to spawn its block right here. Its block, you might ask, is going to be a destroyer block. Okay. So, you might see where this is heading, you might not. Don't worry. It's going to be a stroke of brilliance. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go and add more tile map to this. So we probably want to get this and then just kind of go over to here. Right like that. So put a thing down here. Like this. Okay, grab that one, put that there. And then let's actually do this. And this, oopsie, oopsie, oopsie. Made a oopsie, oopsie. 
go ahead and get rid of all this stuff here. Add a couple of these boys in there. All right, so now we have just a hallway. That's a kill hall. Oh yeah. So now we're going to go ahead and grab a couple of these things. And we'll need to put one here, one here. Here and then we can go that and move that. And then I think if I do this, copy this around, yeah, perfect. So basically skip three and sort of go like that. Now I just gotta get this uh, removal brush and do that. So now if we hit play. I should be able to go through here quite easily with my slime character, right? So it's very easy, just you know, go. But maybe not as easy as I thought. We're just gonna get chased back. Crap, okay. I either need to slow down the rate of fire or increase the holes that you can hide in. I think we'll slow down the rate of fire for now. And see what we can do. So they'll start attacking. We can just barely get out in time for that. But you see, the problem is with this destroyer block. As soon as it gets touched, it gets destroyed. We don't have time to push it down here. We can't even hide it in here. This is where these two things are going to come into play. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to create a, a little nodule thing here, and we're going to add a new gate right here, and this is where the ultimate destination of the destroyer block is going to be, right? So, what we then want to do is add a lever here. And this lever is going to be in charge of this gate. Right there. So, you come down through here, you hit this lever, it disables this gate, which I'll show you what it does here in a second. Oops, well that doesn't matter, it's gonna get hit anyway. Well, I myself. Okay. That block gets hit. Yeah, yeah. We come down through here, come through our little hole, flip the lever, which got rid of the gate, but also destroyed the blocks. Why did that destroy the blocks? Do projectiles destroy movable blocks? I think they do. Hold on. One second. Here, in level 2-4, we established that the blocks get destroyed by the projectiles, right? However, I want the blocks to not get destroyed by projectiles, but this block doesn't matter here anyway, so I think we're fine if we ignore that. And then 2-5, we do portals, 2-6, we don't deal with that issue, and then 2-7, we do not deal with that either. Okay. So what I can do is in the projectile script, 
removable block, we're not going to do anything. Um, except for destroy uh, this dot game object. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. I'm going to exchange. So essentially now, if we hit play and I cheat my way down there, I'm going to grab our slime, move him down here to a happy little place. We're going to flip this switch, which releases those two blocks. You might see where this is going. We're then going to have the player come back up through here. And then they're going to have to go through here, which is not actually what I wanted to have happen. I just realized. But essentially, uh, they're going to be pushing both blocks at the same time down this hallway in order to stop these from firing. They're basically going to push them there. Then they're going to go back for the destroyer block, push it down, and uh, do that. But I forgot that the player's going to have to get back to the uh, the thing there. Yeah. So, I might move the pressure plate, move it down here. Then I can put the uh, thing here so it spawns, and then we can go back to our tile map editor, and we're just going to erase these two here and add that there. Okay, so now the player has a little more range of movement anyway. Um, once they get back here, they can go around those two blocks and then they can push them together up there, effectively forming a shield. <clears throat> they don't want to spawn a destroyer block right away though. If they destroy one of these blocks, they're basically screwed. Um, I guess they could just block with one and then have the destroyer block come through here um, behind the one. Um, but then that'd be kind of hard for them to get up here and push it down before they get shot? Maybe? I don't know. Anyway, that's the, the basic premise of this. They want to flip this lever, which they think, oh, it's going to unlock that gate. But no, it unlocks the gate above. They're going to have to go all the way back through to get to it. Right? Okay. So, what we want to do next is... Add in some more things here. And so, it might be nice to go back to the old pitfall traps. Where we had a couple of pitfalls here in the front. And we have a couple of uh, movable blocks out here. I need to get into them and we're going to flip the lever, right? How do we want to do that? Did I? Okay. I was wondering if I made it the gate just toggles on and off. I was wondering if I could use a pressure plate to have like blocks like in this little area. And then the player pushes them down, but when they do a gate opens, a request closes here. So they basically push the block out, but then a gate closes behind them. But that wouldn't really help. Anyway, because then they might be hit by the projectiles there. And be against a wall so I couldn't move them out. I could add some functionality. But it only triggers once on the pressure plate. So 
So I guess I can make a serialized field called trigger once equals false, because by default we don't want them to trigger um, once, right? And so we don't care about the on enter thing too much, because um, the only time it's going to be used is for like gates and cages and stuff like that. But in exit, we want to do if trigger once equals true, we're going to just copy all of this into here. And that way, it can never turn off, right? So what we'll do then that we've done that is I can make some holes in these walls. And I think it might be nice to put them like kind of in line with these, at least for these two, we'll do that. So let's grab this. Junk that, junk that. Grab this boy, put him there, him there, and there, him there. And we will get our closed gates here and here. I want to grab both of those and set them not active in the start. And then we'll go ahead and hide them. We want to grab a pressure plate. And we want it to be here. and here. Thinking. So if, if the player pushes the block down and onto the pressure plate, it is going to cause the gate to close, which means the player isn't going to go back through, right? Unless I do some crazy stuff. I think we'll just try this for now anyway. Um, movable block, go here. Movable block, go here. And so if we hit play and I try this out, I'm able to push this down, which will trigger that. And seal the gate, which means I can then, I can push this up and over and just kind of cheese the whole puzzle. Except you need all three blocks, so you couldn't necessarily do that. But you could continue to spawn the destroyer blocks, push them through here, and destroy those. Because you probably think, oh my god, that actually might be a better idea. Because they might be thinking, oh, the uh, cubes are for these to flip that lever to open that up, and not that unleashes that. Right. Also, what I could do is I could have the lever spawn, or the pressure plates here spawn multiple things. One is a pitfall, the player right there. And I can do something like this. And then I want to grab these ones, I think. Like that. Okay. So yeah, if I do that, I'm gonna work. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. So we're gonna grab pitfalls. And I'm going to add these here. Hmm. 
But what if they're, yeah, if they reset, then they're just gonna show up right away. It's fine, I can figure that out at the moment. For now, we're going to take, can I just do that? Nope, okay, so we're gonna get rid of that. Select multiple objects. Put that in there. Draw the second pressure plate. Okay, so the second pitfall goes for that pressure plate. And then we want to take the second pressure plate, move in the first pitfall, right? Yep. And we want to get rid of the second gate vertical there and move this one into there. Let's check the is multiple box. So now it should um, allow you to push the block through here and then it'll disable or it'll, oh fuck, it'll enable the pitfalls if I turn them off to begin with. <laughs> off. Okay, so we're gonna go over here, push these down, I'm gonna hit the thing, and then send us back. Right? Oh, oh my god, arrows. Which forces you very nicely into that. And it should allow you to... Yeah, that is the, the one bad thing about the pressure plates. Is that they are kind of off-centered there. Hold on. Hold on. Is it time? Is it time for the triangular pieces? Time, ladies and gentlemen? Is it is it truly time? I mean, they don't line up with anything right here, so it's it's kind of annoying to have them here. But uh I guess we could try that. It it, sh it might give me just enough room move them. Let's give it a try. I think it will. I'm gonna ignore that last one. I don't want to get sent back again. Incidentally, you could do that. Didn't I make that one only happen once? Whatever. Ah, oh, man, it still hits. Fuck. Okay. In that case, let's just remove these. Pressure plate one, um... You are set to trigger once. Why could I trigger you multiple times? I guess because... I don't know. I don't know why the fuck that happened. What about a immobile block? I don't think that would help me. But what if I make it smaller? And then we can try this and see what would happen. I can kind of adjust them as need be, right? I get hit by a dark. I don't have the level reset working yet, so. That's not bad. Okay. Nope, run away. Oh, 
Oh, look at that, that precious time just getting removed. Okay, but why can I redo it? I'm not supposed to untrigger them if I get off. Whatever, anyway. Can I push it? Nope. Still too hard. Okay, but what if I go back to scene? And all these immovable blocks, I make it 0 0.7? 0 0.7. How about now? No, but apparently I triggered the block again, which... Right, because the trigger for these is, if it's active, set it to inactive. But I could add some more logic. Jesus Christ. Uh. So, um, this is if it's one game object, I want it if it's multiple. So, if trigger once equals true, we want to do this. Then I want to make a private bool called as triggered equals false. And in here we set this to as triggered equals true. We'll do and as triggered equals false for that. Else. And then we'll just copy this down to here into that. Okay, so that should take care of the constant flippy dippy nonsense. Um, through it. Move block to this. I'm gonna set equal to false. It's so dumb. Okay, so if it's not a destroyer block, we're gonna play that. Or they're gonna check if move block to this equals true. No, not there. Sorry. Yes. Yes, actually. We want that there. And then we want to do and we want to check if collision dot game object dot tag equals movable block or if it equals inverted block we want to do collision dot game object dot um, transform dot position equals this dot transform dot position which should snap the goddamn block on top of the pressure plate i hope okay so i can get rid of these two mobile blocks and i can grab this stuff once again
make this look nice and pretty. Okay. But one more try with feeling, let's try it. <clears throat> so this time when I press it, I push it down, it should apparently not snap directly on top of the fucker. Why? Let me just check the uh, logic here. So, oh wait. I know. I know. I didn't set these pressure plates to move this, or uh, move block to this, so. Yeah, also, why did I reset the level there? Oh, because I moved down. Right. Okay. So now we have the block completely free and clear of the thing down there. Let's just make sure that if we go down here and I move it now, I can, but for some reason that still triggers. Why do you trigger? Trigger once is checked. So it is a multiple object, okay? Each object. Mm. I think I did this in the wrong layer, but still. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's my fault. To copy this, paste that there, paste that there. Move has triggered to here. I can just get rid of this code. And copy this code to here. I think before it was going through every game object and then it was checking if it has triggers whatever and this stuff which of course um yeah it's still gonna do that okay so what i need to do is cut this one and add another if statement here so first we want to do, if trigger once is true, which is always going to be true, in this case, it's going to then go down to here, which then says, if it's false, we want to do this. Otherwise, don't do anything. Okay. And just to very easily test this, I just want to take my guy, move him down here, and we'll just flip back and forth. Layer. Come with me, please. Okay. So, on. Why is it still turning off? Bro, please. So, it, it's... Nothing's happening when I get off the uh, pressure plate, which is what it should do, because nothing's there. So it checks if has triggered once. The multiple game objects is true. 
It checks this, which is true, but it doesn't matter. Multiple objects. Trigger ones. Move to this block. So it goes into here. It checks if it was triggered as false. And then switch has triggered a true. Which means, going forward, it should always be true here and never happen, right? Um, let's show debug mode. I think debug mode will show me the stuff that's not. So, why is... What is, what is happening? What? So I activate it, nothing happens. I leave. It, it does that? This was, it trigger once is true, which means it was always happening. Still not sure why has triggered is not true, but let's set that aside and try it one more time. Okay. So if we look at our pressure plate, it takes two. Okay, has triggered turns on. I walk off. Nothing happens. I hear the thing. Okay. That was so dumb. So very dumb. Okay. So now, when we push the blocks down, it'll spawn a pitfall, which will make us go back to the beginning and put a gate up so we can't cheat and take a destroyer block through here. That leaves us, oh my god, with one block, which is this movable block three right here, yep. There's just this block we got to do something with. Um, those will have blocks on them if the player does it properly, uh, which means we need to get this block down there somehow, which I guess we could just leave it there. I guess. So if I put another gate here, it's not going to do anything because that's the edge anyway. Um, Hmm. What am I going to put in this area, I guess? Because I, I don't want it to be just like that, right? There's got to be some thing for the rest of this area, right? Hmm. What to do, what to do. Oh, well, well. Welly, 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 welly. I don't know, I think this is a fine level. I do say so myself. Let, let's just let's just test and see how long this level takes. Because maybe it takes enough time that I don't have to worry about adding extra stuff. Gotta wait for those. Which wastes a lovely like two seconds. I forgot to push that other block down, so we have to go back. Which sends us back up here again. Oop, gotta wait. <laughs> okay. If 
right, so now we're out of here. Uh, the obvious play is to just push these blocks down into here. I'll start with that one. And then let's just kind of do them one at a time so I don't have to worry about this. Messing up. There we go. That was weird. The, uh, the block just kind of got snapped into there. Okay, so we do that. Flip this. Oh, those blocks got out this time. Okay, cool. I'm just going to take the shortcut for the portal here. Be careful not to hit that. Now I can just move them at the same time, creating a lovely little barrier. here and we can come back over to here hit this which spawns us a destroyer block wait how did that one get through did it move the oh my god they're pushing back the movable blocks Shit. I didn't realize that would happen I guess they do have a velocity so if they hit something else with a rigid body they would be like we want you to move. I guess that's just one more thing the player has to watch out for. Cool. Okay, so now we have this destroyer block. Let's carefully move it down here without hitting any pressure plates. The destroyer block destroys it, and we're in at 2.30. Okay, so it took 2 minutes and 30 seconds to get down there. Um, but I feel like we, we could do something else. Um, what if... I was thinking, what if we block a gate here that the destroyer block has to destroy in order to, to get through? Um, I mean, we could do that. So you have to like get multiple destroyer blocks through, right? That'd be freaking just annoying. Oh. I think I'll do that actually. So let's add a, uh, a thing here and a thing here. Let's add this here, and we'll just grab this thing and do that here. And then I'm going to add a, a gate here. Oh, can move that here. Actually, 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 I need to make this like that. This one needs to stay like that, and then we need to delete that one. Okay, because then we have to put the, the block void here. We need the player to be able to get past the gate the first time in order to uh, get through and push these blocks into there and activate the lever to get those out there to get the destroyer block this far anyway. And so, I'm not sure that error, the player will have to move a block, the destroyer block down here, over to here, push it into that in order, in order to get another destroyer block down through here into there. So, but it'll also prevent the player from taking these blocks and pushing them up here, uh, which, I mean, you could do. Like, once you push these down here, you could, could just go around and push these blocks over to here if I'd left that area open. So this is actually a very nice way to do this, if you, if you think about it, because we don't want them to just use those two blocks, because then they can just hit the button, go down over here, just destroy the wall, right? They don't have to hit this lever to free these blocks and do this interesting mechanic that I created for them, you know? I think that works. Um, anything else that I want to do? I could put another gate here as well and have them have to get multiple of the uh, destroyer blocks through because that would make it a little more interesting. If I did that, I think. So let's do that. Okay. We need to put that there. Put that there. Because at this point, I am all in on wasting the player's time. What I'm doing. Okay. Gotcha. So. 
I put this block right there so that we could uh, go through here and push the destroyer block again. Hmm. All right, so now let's see how tedious and long it takes to complete this mission. So once again, we go through here. Because this level now is all about returning to the start. With the exception of getting hit by the uh, projectiles, you do not want to get hit by those and return to the start. You want to uh, return to the start by going to pitfalls. Uh, and that's that's how you want to do it. Yeah, right, so I'm, I'm actually just going to move this one, uh, these two, over to here. Uh, just... Bloop. Bloop. Okay. Just move these two over here and just do this. Boom, boom, lever. This thing down here. I'm going to move the one that's up a bit, up a little higher. There we go. And then, oh, 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 oh. Try this again. There we go. Moving both at the same time. Right, a nice little shield. Once these get into place, right here, we need to run away, get our destroyer block. God, you can see them just very slowly being pushed back. We're gonna have to uh, go here real quick, push them against the thing again, wait for it. A shot, let's go. Push that down here. Destroy this gate. First gate is destroyed. I'm gonna push them once again up against this. Try to get that one up a little higher, I think. We don't really need the top one. It's just so that the player can go up and push the thing down here. So we have that. Let's make sure we push these back into place here real quick. Slide this guy down. Slide him over. All right, so we're past the 230 mark. All right, so we got that. Let's go back into here. Push it over here now. Is the one at the top moving anymore? I can't really tell. It doesn't look like it is. Okay. Let's go over here. Oosh, oosh, oosh. Well, that was close. I think if we would have waited for the projectile to shoot a little bit more, we would have actually uh, doomed ourselves there. That's fine. We can just go ahead and push this. Now we can just push this directly into this hole down to here, over through here, and bam! Victory done in 310. Okay, so we added like another 30 seconds onto the map right there. Perfect. Love to see it. Hell yeah. Also, I just want to check real quick to make sure that the projectiles, when you're dying, it's not resetting the level. Time, yep, yeah, doesn't reset the time. It does reset the level, not the time. Okay, so that's our level here. Love it. I could, if I wanted to, add a couple more gates. I could make like just a stack of gates here. <laughs> no, that'd be, that'd be too, too much, a little too much. So, now let's add the different things here. So, let's start with uh, attack towers. Sorry. Got to uh, lock this. Go. Okay, now we can go. Attack towers. Boom. I guess one thing that I didn't take into account is you could potentially take, once you get these two blocks unlocked and move them up here, you could take a destroyer block and destroy these towers right away so you don't have to worry about keeping those blocks in position. But, I mean, still you're still using a bunch of stuff there, so that's fine. We got these three pitfalls. 
which we're going to take over to here. We have our pressure plates, which I'm trying to think if these are okay now. We also have our lever. And then our gates, so let's just search gate. Move them all into here. And that's everything except the movable blocks. We will go into there and we move five spawn points. So block spawn. I don't care if it has a capital P. It's fine with me. Or capital P. Capital P. All right, now we just need to set these boys up in their correct slots. So here's one. Here's two. Here's three. Four. And here is block number five. And that's everything set up now. So let's just make sure on the gates that they have the correct uh, trigger here. So at start, at start is deactivated, deactivated, active, active, active. Okay. And then these pressure plates. So let me remind myself what happens to the pressure plates when you write. So I need to add a script onto the pitfall, which is a, a serialized field active on spawn equals true is going to be the default. And then when we reset the pitfall, I guess right in here we can just do if active on spawn equals true or equals false, I guess. We want to do this dot set active this dot game object, sorry. Uh, set active equals false. So that way it kind of cuts out, right? That way I don't have to go into our um, level reset script and do anything because if we look at the pitfalls, they just set them as active and then they do the reset pitfall thing here. I don't have to add a uh, function to search in the pitfall thing here. I can just do it with that, right? So we then need to Tap this so it reloads our stuff. And then in the pitfall traps here, I just need to make them not active at spawn. So let's test this out just to make sure that the, the logic there works and everything is Gucci. We do that. And then if I get hit by one of these, it should Apparently not do that. I didn't respond it was false. Set the game object to false. Why did it not do that? So when the level reset script happens, for each pitfall, it sets it to true. Then it calls the pitfall script, which sets reset, which goes has triggers false. Those go to false. If active spawn, which is true, goes to false, it is that. So let's go to debug.log. Setting back to false. Incidentally, um, also one other big, big problem uh, in the pressure plates. 
I never set the uh, has triggered to false here. So has triggered equals false. We want to do that. That way we uh, when we reset the pressure plate, um, it also does that. Cool. So that's right. Let's try this one more time and see what the hell's happening. I did put the pitfalls in here, right? One, two, three. Oh, I didn't put the last two in here. That uh, that would do it. There we go. There's the pitfalls. Okay, so now it should work. I was just a dummy and uh, didn't do what I was supposed to do. Okay, so that goes in there. And then it's gonna tank one of these shots. That resets it, but let's make sure I can trigger it again just to be absolutely sure and dandy and make sure. Oh, oh. what? Why? What? What? Why did I go through the block? What? Did, uh... Fuck. <clears throat> yeah. That's what I did. I used the, uh, movable block that was in the level instead of a prefab, so it's... Yeah, that was... Uh, weird. Let's try that again. I think I need to go look at level seven too, uh, two seven as well, to uh, double check some things there. Okay, Let's still move it. Perfect. That one is now done. We're done with that. Kudos to me. Good job. Head pass all around. Now we go to levels. Make this a prefab, a boosh, and then I'm gonna delete that. Open up 2.7, where, okay, I don't have any item spawns here, that's fine. Let's just go to end level, drag 2.8 over here, hit save, and look at 2.6, because I'm pretty sure that I fucked up here. Yep, okay. Prefabs. Destroyer, destroyer, movable, movable. Boop. Destroyer. Destroyer. Movable. 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 I, I knew that I messed this up. And I completely forgot that I have to drag stuff in. I feel like I'm going to forget that multiple times. Um, additionally, I just noticed one other big problem. But the inverse block does not have a spawn, so let's go ahead and create that real quick. There we go. Now the inverse block has a spawn as well. Um, I think that's everything I have to deal with right there. So that's good. Um, were those all the levels I made today? I made 25, but that didn't use any of that stuff. And then this one... I did use this one. Okay, let's delete that one. I'm not sure if I used a prefab for that one or not. Let's just be safe and do that. Just to make absolutely sure. And then level 1-8, I already corrected the problem there. But we need to do the dialogue on 2-8. So, let's see. I suppose we might just want to remind the player that if they get hit by a projectile, they will reset the entire level. But if they fall down a hole, it just sends them back to the beginning. All right. How you fare with this?
you will need to think ahead and figure out what needs to happen when. Also, don't, don't worry about going into pitfalls. Avoid the projectiles as your progress will reset, but the pitfalls could prove helpful for moving around. I'll do that. And that's uh, that's gonna be everything there. So basically, the he tells you, good luck on this one. Um, figure out what you have to do here. Uh, avoid the projectiles, because they'll reset your progress. But the pitfalls just send you back to the start. So it's all about going back to the start, essentially. Nice. Nice. OK. So we're going to go ahead and undo this one and set this one to be the default parent, but we're gonna wrap things up and end things here. So that'll be all for this video, everyone. We made a lot of progress. We got through, um, I think two, three was already finished, right? Yeah, two, three was finished. And then we introduced today the attack pillars. We introduced our portals. We introduced the destroyer block and we then implemented things in a, a nice little way. Um, I really like the idea of having to move a block through an obstacle course and keeping that block alive throughout all of it. Uh, where was the first time we did that? Hmm. I know I did it somewhere, right here. Yeah, level two, two is where we started it with the inverse block where we had to uh, move the inverse block all the way to the end in order to get out of the Thing there. Oh, also, I forgot I was actually updating the uh, gates there with the, uh, with the sprite meshes. Uh, I guess I could do that before we end, like, real quick, uh, for all the gates that I, I used, which are, like, here, but I guess. Ugh, I guess. All right, so horizontal gate. I'll just update these real quick. Shouldn't take too long. And then level five. We have three gates here that we have to do. Lovely. That's so we have horizontal, horizontal, vertical, save. Next level, uh, which is going to be six, which I really started to like gates, didn't I? I can't believe I've done this to myself. That one there. That one goes here. I keep wanting to drag them into the level, but uh, that's not how we do it. Okay. Uh, that was level 26 or 27, which also uses a gate. Lovely. Any other gates? Just that one here, okay. Easy enough for me. And then the last level we did today which needs to also have the gates done. This one is a vertical. And we got a horizontal. And we got, you know what, I'm just gonna grab these three here and I can just drag this up to there. And with the last gate, just drag this one over to there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, let me just double check. I, I didn't make any invisible gates, right? All the gates were visible except for these, right? 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 And then there's that, but that's already orange, so that's fine. Okay, last thing we have to do to wrap things up is of course we cannot forget to add our levels into the game manager. 
so it knows what to load. There we go. Get that. Okay. Let's go ahead and save and unload that scene. Give it again. All right, cool. Did a lot of stuff today. Next time, tomorrow, we will be adding level 9 and level 10, finishing those two up for sure. After we finish those two levels, I think what we'll do is in our, our assets here, we will create our ice and create our depositor um, items so that we can use them in level uh, 21 onward, essentially. And that way, we can uh, have those there. We'll introduce those, implement them, and uh, do that, you know. Also, I haven't used the red or green light. I honestly do not think I'm going to use these. I'm just going to delete them. Uh, we do not need them here. Also, this slime sprite, I'm going to delete that because that's 1.3 megabytes. Don't need that there. Uh, I think I need the, the, the cage back in front still. I'm going to keep those in here. Um, let's just do a little bit of cleanup, shall we? Uh, in the GUI, I used all that, used all this stuff. I guess this thumbnail here, I don't need, but at the same time, we need it for now because it's attached to other stuff right now until we get screenshots. Um, double screenshots right there. Then we got sounds, which we use all of these, so it's fine. Okay, cool. Let's just hit save and we're done. So, Julio. All right, everyone, as usual, thank you all for hanging out. The video will be up on YouTube here in a couple hours. Uh, I think it actually takes like all freaking day in order to like get to a decent quality though. So just FYI. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Tomorrow we're gonna do more levels, do more stuff, and keep this thing moving on. Bye-bye for now.